face in uh, there. Translucent heart. <gasps> a heart. Happy Valentine's Day. It's kind of cute. Aww. No clue. What is it? Oh, Victor Gorgia in the background. Yeah. <laughs> we know what that nice is. What a great yeah. color palette. I know. It looks like an eye. It definitely gives me like a heart, like heart vibes. Definitely does. Any any I ideas on this? Not at the moment. Mm -mm. That is so okay. Cool. We can come wide. Thanks. Must we? What? <laughs> <laughs> can I call it an oh, unidentified nice. floating object? Will that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Yeah. I put cool floating kit thing in my highlight. So. We'll have to see what that is at some point. It's a great color, too. Yeah. Nice flying. For people that have access to highlights, I highly recommend looking at the Deep Staria. That reminded me of a yeah. small version of the Deep Staria. Huh. That highlight is so cool. A weird floaty thing that you can kind of see the innards and. I love those things. Translucent. It's super cool. Was that when you had the low light camera on? I I don't remember. Trevor, do you mind coming off bottom just a little bit and panning right and left so we can get an idea of the yeah, terrain? I do not mind. I can see it a little bit in Atlanta's view, but I can try to play with some lights a little bit. Oh. Okay. Definitely no. Thanks. Let's try the other way. Yep. <coughs> okay, we're good. We can just keep following okay. the ridge up. Thanks. This helps to get a sense of scale of this feature. Mm -hmm. I have a random question thinking back when we saw that neon yellow uh, Bolosoma. Bolosoma. Yes. Um, and the, you know, sort of foot part that's attached to the substrate, is it also called a holdfast, like a coral, or is it a different name? Does anybody know? I was wondering. I call it a holdfast. Okay. I don't know. I don't think we've name. actually, we should ask. I think we know that the sponges are hold fast. I don't know if we know that the corals are hold fast. Right. Mm. I don't know if that's a mm. proper term or not, but. And then we call the, the long bit the stalk of the sponge, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of sponge, yeah. We have a mm -hmm. couple coming into view here. Yep. Oh. Well, oh, that's a bigger one to oh, the that's right. That's a basket star. Okay. Yeah, the one to the right is, is it dead? no longer. Is it dead? Looks yeah. Can dead. we get a partial zoom on the sponge and the plexards? The Go ahead, plexards? Steve. Two lasers on, please. Yes. Lasers on. Thank you. Not blocking any, anyone's view back there, am I? No. Okay, thank you. Come wide. Thanks. And then just behind it, this there's this goofy. brown yeah. thing. I'm going to come around and reapproach it yep. here. Wow, those are. And some really nice what? Um, musher. Mm -hmm. What are they called? Estens there. Anth Anthomastus. Bridge nav. I'm coming back for you. Don't worry. Can we move five <laughs> zero meters bearing zero four <laughs> five, please? Thank you. Wow, whole that's cluster a of them. whole cluster of uh, anthomastus there. Wow. This is like the ultimate Easter egg hunt. <laughs> oh. Okay, zoom in, please. These are pretty. Do you want them all in frame, or do you want to Oh, no, look actually, at not the anthomastus. It's the thing to our um, brown thing to the top right. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Yeah. We can that's totally nice look to get this view of the anthomastus. This is what I'm trying to look at. Roger. Okay, you can go further in, please. Do you want lasers on? Oh, lasers matter. on is fine. Okay. Full zoom. They're out of frame anyway. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm not sure if we have Steve on with us, if this is one of the things he wanted to have a look at, but. Okay, okay thanks, you can come wide. Is there a little anemone down there? I don't know if that is cute. A lot of different things here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are, are we, we calling that for now, Beth? Uh, potentially a plexart. Just so I can flag it in here. The viewer was saying that they are no longer antimastus, they are heteropolypus. Is that a thing? No. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> Not sure, but thanks for the comment. Oh, someone says, thanks for all the love and admiration you show to food service people, your exploration heroes, but you show appreciation to everyone who supports you. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it takes it. Everybody out here is an important part of the team. Yes, absolutely. That's the truth. And as Trevor said, those who graciously provide us with food are a big part of keeping our crew happy. Yep. It's a huge part of morale, you know? Can it we really get a is. partial oh, zoom yeah. on this well. little white feature? The tall feathery? This one right here. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a type of sponge, but I cannot be certain. Okay, and with a little Chrysogorge off to the left. Great, thanks for that. I think we just don't have Chris with us right now, but that was something I think he was interested in earlier. how we know where we are. Thank you. Yep. It's a little baby bolosoma there on the top left. Yeah. Oh. You're gonna go big and strong one day. Keep at it. We've pal. seen your cousins. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Can you pan right, Trevor? Thanks. Nice little canyon there with a little bit of stuff. Oh yeah. Stuff. Okay, you can keep going. Thanks. Very interesting rock feature we're coming up over here. Yeah. Wow. That very squiggly, is that a coral? Yeah, that's a bamboo Ooh, coral Bamboo there. coral, squiggly bamboo. Water seems a little bit more particle laden here. Mm -hmm. Does this be interesting for eDNA at all or not enough? Not, not yet. Okay. Can we have a look at this, what I think is a hemichorallium fan over here to the left? I feel like we haven't seen one of those in a little bit. Or maybe of that size. It's How many in there. I think it's so close, samples we'll do we have left? Happens. Go ahead, Sam, Several. Please. I think we've got three Niskins available. Yep, three Niskin. 
Okay, yeah, maybe we might want to collect one. No, maybe that's not a hemichorallium. What is that? Is that a carnoid hanging off of it right there? It is, yeah. Upper yeah. Left? Okay, come wide. Oh, this is a nice shot. Seems too dense, but maybe that is what it is. It almost looks like Solanderide. Yeah. Did you say we're going to do a Miskin here? We're thinking about yeah. it. Thinking uh, yeah, about let's it. go ahead and take one. Roger that. All Since right, that's going to be Niskin 4, Niskin 4. Niskin 4, Niskin 4. That's correct. Yeah, so we got several species in view for this Niskin. Got bamboo coral, some primnoids down on the bottom left, hemichorallium in front of us, crinoids attached to the hemichorallium fam, an anemone. Some plexorids down here, also a paragorgia. So hopefully this eDNA sample will have a variety a of view, please. DNA in it. Bridge nav. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero five zero, please? Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. For anybody watching at home, currently the oxygen concentration where Herc is is about 25 micromolar, so relatively low, yet still we're seeing a lot of different corals. Roger. I'm hoping by the time we get up towards waypoint 9, we'll be in even lower oxygen concentration. And I would love to get some rock samples up there. So up ahead, it looks like we have a intermingled hemichorallium and a sponge and a crinoid. Oh my goodness. And a bamboo coral. <laughs> These <laughs> coveted spaces. Oh, and that brown plexorid in the background again. Interesting. Can we get a partial on this area? Wow. Go ahead, Steve. And can we get lasers off for part of that? I got it. Thank you. Oh, you got it. You are Whoa. already on the page. <laughs> That's a funny looking crinoid. That's so it's odd. <laughs> not looking too healthy. Is that a little and squat yeah, lobster? Is that a little squat lobster hanging out too? There's hydrozoans attached here. Amazing. Wow. Look at this little community. <laughs> if we could um, come a little bit wide and try to get more of the brown, uh, this thing right here, that would be great. Okay, go in. I'm not sure what that is. That reminds me of a Christmas tree coral for some reason. Okay. It looks very tree-like. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, it does. It. it looks like the Christmas tree in, like, February when you <laughs> still need <laughs> it. Yeah, right. <laughs> the one that's sitting on the curb that's never been picked up. Yeah. You're still in the living room. I really got to deal with this. <laughs> if you're still using live trees. I don't even remember the last time I had a live tree. Mm. Thank I Christmas. Well. I'm not sure what that is. I Go use ahead. a Norfolk Island pine. Which we just keep, we use it for the last five years. Oh. There's uh, a potted plant. There's places near where I live where there's uh, high tension wire, like uh, power lines, and you're allowed to just go snip your own trees out of there. <laughs> so oh, yeah, because they're they, going to cut it down they're anyway. They're going to cut it down anyway, so you might as well just make some use out of it. So, yeah. Oh, that's clever. Yeah. You have to get a permit, but it's free. We have not seen a whale today, no. <laughs> but that would be cool. Now we have. Oh, 
Oh, dear. Oh. I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. World's smallest blue whale right there for you. Sea star in the bottom left hand frame. Oh, yeah. Chowing down. Chowing down. There was a question about the eDNA and the primers. Do Will they use 16S um, conserve primers or are they looking for anything specific? So the uh, thank you for that very specific question, audience member. Um, <laughs> uh, so to give our audience at home uh, an idea of what the question is asking, when uh, we're extracting DNA from these samples, you get kind of a bulk mixture. And one way to understand the diversity is to try to amplify a specific gene that many different organisms have, and then compare the gene sequences to each other to come up with an understanding of the diversity. Um, in the tree of life. Um, so there's certain proteins or certain biomolecules and cells that uh, all organisms have, um, or all different uh, groups of organisms have that don't evolve super, super fast. Those genes are relatively conserved. And so you can use those for these taxonomic identities. And the one specifically asked about is the 16S rRNA gene, which is part of the ribosome of um, bacteria and archaea. Um, it's commonly used for assessing diversity. That was probably not the target of the eDNA study because the eDNA study is actually wanting to look at uh, macrofauna <laughs> and um, myofauna maybe. And so they would be looking at different genes. Um, maybe the 18S, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure. So the 18S ribosomal RNA gene. Um, Sometimes they also look at, uh, oh, I'm going to forget the name of it. Mm. You're pushing the limits of my animal understanding what the <laughs> gene is. But anyway, it's probably a different, uh, many different sets of genes because um, animal identification uh, doesn't rely as much on ribosomes. It relies on other uh, genes. So you can see two different types of sheet flows here, uh, one on our right and one on the left. Probably different timing, slightly different colors. What does myofauna mean? Uh, myofauna is kind of like small fauna. Uh, so not big things like this that we can see. But if we were to zoom in on the rocks, you might see those like small little like worm tubes. And uh -huh. if we were to pick up sediment and sift it, you would maybe see like small little organisms in there like worms. Those are generally in the group of myofauna. So they're small, they're not easily seen by eye from far away, but you don't necessarily need a microscope to see them. Oh, so that's cool. what's in between, because yeah. then my, <laughs> micro, oh, I didn't know And then that. you've got the megafauna, cool. which is like things like whales. Mm. <laughs> big, big, big things. But mega. would corals also be megafauna? Uh, oh, corals are ma macro. Macro, mega, Mega, myo. macro, myo. Micro. Micro. But is there micro? <laughs> Say that like. Is there also microfauna? Or has it become microbes? Yeah, we don't really call it microfauna because... Uh, They're well, not animals? You can have microscopic animals. <laughs> oh, like <laughs> It gets confusing. Okay. Yeah. So, Star you know, the, the, these okay. are operational definitions, Macro. but not necessarily taxonomic definitions. Ooh. Roger. Is there meso as well? Is that a thing too? I don't nice know about Argus a shot. Fauna. Yeah, look at Miso that. Fauna. Atalanta. Look at that start. So oh, beautiful. that is a cool shot from Atlanta. We just Looks passed like over a sea star. Slime star. It's just going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> right, like you want to just park it right there. Yeah. Kind of like a slime star almost. I'm impressed with how, like, obviously the science chat is different, but with the, the regular uh, viewers asking extremely specific questions. Mm -hmm. that, like, I have no idea what that question even meant, but <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. It, it feels like they have to have been involved with
with the operation or something to know. I'm sure there's a lot of scientists in the Yeah. It's a lot of students in the chat, chat too. Yeah. yeah. A lot true. of students are like, I'm doing my homework while I'm watching this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Well, if you're making your phylogenetic trees <laughs> <laughs> uh, with different DNA sequences, yeah, this is this is what we're doing. Whoever asked about mesofauna, I googled it, and it's soil invertebrates that are greater than. Oh, I missed that. What you, uh, mesofauna was what? Soil mesofauna, and they're small animals greater than 40 microns in length, so three times the thickness of a human hair. Okay. So All right. mites. Uh, Nematodes. Nematodes. Yeah. Soil is not a um, Woolly, what are they called? Woolly bears? Uh, tardigrades. Tardigrades. Are those animals? Yes. Yes, yes right? Cool. Yeah. If you've never seen a tardigrade, Google that now. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge nav. They're water bears. Water bears, thank you. <laughs> Woolly bear is a caterpillar. Can we move Bang. five zero yeah. meters bearing zero six zero, please? Thank you. We have a woolly bear festival in North Carolina, not far from where I live, and they actually race them. Wow. They I mean, race quote them? unquote race. What? Do yeah. they put them on like a stem or something? <laughs> <laughs> that was a serious question. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. No, no answer. No, no, no stems. No stems Nobody involved. knows. So you've seen the race, the woolly bear race? Yeah, you could probably Google that too. Do they? So the what's I mean, I don't think it's quite like I don't know if we need a dramatic title for that, but uh, yeah. Oh, it's the 45th annual Woolly Worm Festival. Yes, oh indeed. my goodness. In Banner Elk, North, in Banner Elk Carolina. North Carolina. Oh my gosh! So Purchase they, online e-tickets now. Is there a start line <laughs> or a finish line, or is it like first one to make it out of a circle? Yeah, it's kind of that sort of like the how they race hermit crabs. <laughs> I'm not familiar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I went down a rabbit hole. I apologize. Yeah, it's a, not a unit of reference we understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the hermit crab race. Oh, yeah, right. NASCAR. Thanks for verifying me. that, Annabelle. I appreciate the, the backup on that. Yeah, no, I yeah. I appreciate <laughs> you saying that. My wing woman. The uh, Woolly Worm Festival reminded me that Rhett told me he won a lottery to go spend a weekend uh, with synchronized fireflies somewhere. Oh, Whoa. wow. He's going to go with his girlfriend. Yeah. We also have those. I don't mean to, like, overemphasize, but, yeah, in the Smokies. Cool. Yeah, maybe that's what where he's headed. I think. Yeah. Yeah. What are synchronized fireflies? It just yeah, what it what sounds it like they blink synchronistically. Yeah. Like the real fireflies. In yes. large numbers. Oh. Yeah. How? We also what? have blue ghost fireflies. What? They just kind Can of. Can we get some partial zooms on these orange ones? Zoom in, please. Thank you. All right. What's a blue ghost firefly? That's another type of firefly. The light is sort of bluish in nature. Like you were talking about like the um, quality of light yesterday yep, when yep. you're uh, balancing the cams and things like that. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of bluish and it and it fades. It doesn't blink. It's just like woo. Oh. Woo. Wow. oh my goodness. Yeah, like, like a dimmer switch almost like woo. That's cool. Yeah. I've never even thought about there being different types of fireflies. Oh, yeah. man, there's many species. Now someone's asking, has is anyone whole genome sequencing coral sponge DNA? I don't know. Mm. Um, uh, Chris Kelly. Oh, what is that? <laughs> <So> <laughs> Steve Alskovich um, uh, was one of like our scientists ashore. And... Um, uh, Meredith, whose name I last, last name I forget. Everett. Everett, thank you. Who's uh, leading the eDNA study? I believe they just got some. Uh, are they uh, proposing a project to do exactly that? To look more at the taxonomy and its connection to the genomes of these organisms. Whether they're going to do whole genome sequencing, I'm not sure. 
Ooh. I think, from what I recall, I know, not correlated, but the uh, Gloucester Marine Genomics Institute in Massachusetts, I think last year published the first whole genome sequence of the American lobster. And that wow. Was a, mm -hmm. Of the American? Uh, Gloucester Marine Genomics Institute. Uh, lobster. American I thought lobster. she said the lobster. lobster. I heard, American, I heard <laughs> American lobster. Yeah. Or monster. So There's that another was one a pretty big news. Dual Walteria there. Yeah. Another hiding Easter bunny. Yeah. <laughs> this one's getting blown by the wind, though. <laughs> Is the current coming at us, Trevor? Uh, here, I'm dead stick. Let's see what happens. Not yes, a lot. not a lot. Yeah, no, it's just barely moving. Yeah, okay. So it's co it's still coming, coming right at us north? over the from the e down below this ridge on the east. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very minorly. I want to look at this rock. It's a nice looking rock. Lynette, yeah. So how several far different are we? things in our field of view here for our audience. We've got Victor Gorgia in purple, Paragorgia in this dark pink. I think this is a plexord in yellow. Maybe this is an urchin up here on the top of the rock. Got a sponge mm. down low, right? Yeah, there's yep. a sponge down Hanging here. off the bottom. The little cup corals up on the top. Another barnacle, or what was that uh, thing? Oh, yeah. Was the Victor Gorgia? A chitin. Yes. chitin. Is it on the move? Chitin. Can you zoom in, please? I think it, did I see it move? Uh, is that a thing they do? Yes. Most likely. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, so. so. That's what it looks like under a chitin? I don't know. We I'm don't not know sure if that's, that's what that is. Okay. Yeah. And we've got some brittle stars in this uh, Victor Gorgia. All right. Thank you, Steve. Steve, are we able to put the high pack map back on satellite feed three for a Absolutely. little while? Absolutely. Thank you. another stocked crinoid over here. I haven't seen as many of them, but we'll <laughs> People said, I just saw something that looked like bunny ears. Was that the, the sponge? Yeah, yeah, that was the Walteria. <laughs> it does look Walteria. like bunny ears. That's what I was giggling about. <laughs> Lynette, I was going to ask about how far we are from waypoint nine. We are 240 meters away from waypoint nine. Thank you. How far yep. have we gone on this watch? Uh, I don't know. We started, I think, just between waypoint six and waypoint seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got a Chrysogorgia here. Looks like we might have a sea star nomen on a coral there. We want to maybe get a partial zoom on that. Where were you looking? Right here. Thank you. Looks like we moved more than a thousand meters. Cool. Zoom in there, please. Is what you're looking for? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. It's one of those. Oh, but that's a different type of. Yeah. That's a yeah. sponge, right? I believe so. What's that star doing on there? Huh. What's a star like Is you doing in a place star? like Bridge this? Bridge <laughs> <laughs> Can we move five zero right. meters, bearing zero right, four you. five, please? Thank you. Huh. Thank you. 
Yeah, it didn't look like I was eating either. <laughs> Just like impaled. Right, I was like, how is it hanging off the side like that? Can we get some partial zooms on these white edge? Oh, wow. It goes all the way up to high. the right there. Not one of those brown plexorids, too. Uh, it's uh, like hydrozoa, I think. <laughs> That's exactly what that is. It's like it's almost like karate looking a little bit like Meh. Yeah, I think that's a hyper type of hydrozoan, but I'm not exactly sure. Oh, oh there's, there's another these Yeah. Crabs. A lot it looks spider like. Oh. <laughs> it's like moving, I was like, uh, get back. Really cool patterns, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. very much so. Steve, can you, do you have any more zoom? Yes, I do. Can you zoom in right there? Like, look at that. Yeah, that's, that's intricate. That's incredible. Yeah, that's oh, intricate. Oh, wow. It looks like puzzle pieces. Yeah, so it does. So yeah. cool. I feel like that could inspire some cool architecture. I don't know if I've sure. seen this. I don't coral. think I have either, yeah. Beautiful. We got Ryan chiming in. It's Good almost morning, like the Ryan. pattern Maori used. Yes. Stony coral. Wow. Beautiful. Um, I'm not going to try to see that. <laughs> Enolapsamia. You thank you, you, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't seen stony coral, I think, yet on right, this day, so that's a nice wow. observation. Ah, Ryan's oh, right. That cool. Okay. That's exciting. Thank Wait. you. Okay. Wow, I think this is the lowest wind speed we've had in days. <laughs> <laughs> 14 and a half knots. That's great. Nice. I oh, know, 12 knots. Oh, you mean real wind speed. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. It's also the lowest. I, thought I thought you were talking about <laughs> underwater wind. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there was a nice fog last night. Like, late last night. Fog? Yeah, it was really yeah, foggy it was. and still out. I was sleeping. I was going to say the fog was in my brain, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always a nice brain fog. Oh, going back to that um, sort of burgundy-ish gelatin-looking thing we saw earlier. Remember someone oh, said that... like heart thing? Yeah, the heart-looking mm. heart yeah. animal. Someone said that they think the 
Ident unidentified floating object was a bullet bulletinid octopod. They sent the footage. I was wondering if it was an octopod. <laughs> oh. They said they sent the footage or around to Mike Vecchion. Vecchion. I don't know who that is, but yep. I'm guessing a scientist. Um, and that's what people are guessing. Cool. B that's oh. a, that so cool. that was an octopod, huh? Or a cephalopod. Oh. Some kind. B O L I. Yeah. That's cool. Does that mean it had an eye? Or eyes? It looked like it had eyes. It looked like yeah. a tiny little. It looked like almost like a cross between a heart and a Dumbo octopus when I was looking at it. Yeah. I'll have to pull back up the uh, highlights later. I thought I was just imagining the eye shapes, but. I heard someone say it had an eye. We okay, were, we're getting a. Uh, for that stony coral, it might have been a Madrapora oculata. But still a stony coral, and something that I don't think we've seen much of on this dive. Yeah, someone just said Lophelia, stony coral, maybe. Another one of those pom-pom anemones going out of the frame at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Hey, Steve, can we do a bamboo coral zoom, please? And I'm going to go up it. Roger. It's a great way to visualize why it's called a bamboo coral mm -hmm. with the nodes. Try and get a little closer here. It just memory. keeps going, behind doesn't it? it? <laughs> What's that behind it? Wow. Whoa, this is a tall Ooh. one. Woo. Oh my god. There we go. Nice. Nice teamwork yeah, there. That was a nice yeah. Work. Thank you. Thanks. That was a nice view, yeah. Chris is coming back to that stony coral we saw a few minutes ago. The mm -hmm. difference between the two species is that the Madrapora has zigzag branching patterns, and you can see the polyps from all sides, whereas an, elaps an elapsamia only has polyps on one side. Those are both stony? stony. Yes, both, both stony, stony corals. Thank Bridge you to nav. Ryan and Chris for giving your expert guidance. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero four five, please? Thank you. So by the end of this watch, we'll have done like twelve hundred meters, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like I was a I was a little hesitant putting in a three kilometer transect for a dive, but I'm impressed. Yeah, nice. we're actually pretty close to waypoint yep. nine, yep. which is our last waypoint, and yes. we have maybe. Four hours bottom yes. time left. Something like that. Yep. They'll just keep following the ridge. Oh, it does keep going, doesn't it? Oh, yep. yeah. Yeah, if you were to Fantastic. zoom out, it goes up a little bit further before oh, it yeah. actually reaches the geo. Great. So that cliff to our west, Ooh. northwest, that's a drop off. I, for some reason, I was down. reading it as like a cliff that was ab above us. But nope. Mm. No, we're following like a knife's edge. Yes. <laughs> this whole dive. That low porch light is really... It's useful. It's really useful. Just like... Yeah, there's so many times I wanted to see in the little caves. Yeah. It definitely has its place. Victor Gorgia there in purple. They seem to always have brittle stars on them every time we've seen them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A nice little shrimp uh, fanning mm -hmm. itself here on the end. Yep. <laughs> Very long, are the whiskers arms? I can't tell. Very long. Sea star over there on the right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some more sponge action, it looks like. More 
sponge action. There's that uh, brown. I think that's again those plexorids. Yep. Okay. But it's not a great shot because it's at an angle. Yeah. There's one coming up ahead. If we could oh, angle yeah. ourselves to get in position yeah, to look betcha. at that. Okay, please zoom in there. Pretty far away, but what's on it? Uh, hmm. Don't know. Don't okay. know. Oh wow! Look at the texture on those rocks. I was just about to say that. <laughs> wow. Oh. Botryoidal. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Lynette. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> coming in clutch. You can come, come wide, please. Yeah, what's over there on the starboard side? It's half zoom, partial zoom. There was that brown thing. Yeah, the brown thing, mm. sort of, center sort of right center lower. stage, right lower by the pink. Yeah, I got it. Uh, just by the lasers now. Uh, yeah, just to the right zoom. of the lasers. Is that one of those chitin? Critter, maybe. Oh, maybe. Ooh, it's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. We don't know if it's a chitin. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, because we wouldn't have seen Looks so more many barnacle -y. lifted up like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a really thin mollusk to me, but I don't know. You can see the black structure of the black coral too. Oh yeah. Yeah. What are those things? <laughs> This will never know. <laughs> the world may never know. We've got a few more of our scientists ashore experts online right now, so maybe, maybe they'll venture something in. Um, Trevor? Hello. Before we get to the end of our watch, would you mind taking a break to pull out the front forward bio box so I can see how much space is still in it? Sure. And if I can try oh. to fit another rock in it at some point on the is dive. Is that a possibility? We can just peek in there? Can you use your porch light on, please? Yeah. Porch light. And can you do bubble cam on the reverso action? And see Bubble if we can cam on the reverso action? Uh, Chris nine. doesn't know what the flat <laughs> thing is. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we may never know. Use a bubble cam Reset. to do a selfie. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, I don't know if we programmed that we did one. Not. Okay, look into the bio box with the bubble cam, please. Okay. Let me see what I can do. Here we go. Do. Tool tray out. Woo. Oh, ew. Sorry. Ah, porch light. Ooh, Why are you so bright? Uh, Sorry. Everything. We got rocks. Oh, you got space. Oh, there's plenty of space on the Rock right on. side. Okay, great. Thank you You're for welcome. letting me confirm that. Peeping into Pandora's box there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I definitely wanted to try to get a rock sample for my study from one of these higher depths where the oxygen concentration is really low. So there's still still an opportunity. That'd be cool to name an ROV Pandora. Oh, that would be cool. I want to name it Theseus. Why? So you can just keep changing parts on it forever and never have a new ROV. You just have the same ROV that's 100 years old. <laughs> what were you going to name it? Theseus, after the ship of Theseus. Ah, OK. Ah. The ship where they changed every board on it. Yeah. Is it still the same ship? I mean, our, supposedly all of our cells like die and then regenerate as different cells, right? So, mm -hmm. are we the same people? No, I don't feel like the same person. This just got very meta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Philosophical. Bathy pathies in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> 
Is that really a song? I need to. <laughs> <laughs> I will create one for you, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I think Lift about me up. A Lift me up like the about the pathies in the sky. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was thinking about that one, like, send it up to the spirits in the that's sky. What I, yeah, that's, that's exactly what yeah. I was, you know, <laughs> that's where I was going. I don't know what the lyrics are, but send it up, lift me up. Something. <laughs> Norman Green Mom. Bridge nap. Can we have another five zero meters bearing zero four five, please? Thank you. Can we get a partial zoom on? Yes, we can. This? Oh, what's this guy? Not sure if that's another one of these stony corals or something else. Okay, zoom in, please. <coughs> oh, spongy. Oh, yeah. oh no, there's oh. a coral. Nice. Yeah. Stony. Crinoid on it, too. A lot of. It's like going on here. Pearl stars, too. It's a cool sponge or coral. I don't know. All right, thanks. Looks like we've got those yellow zoanthids stuck to the side of the rock, just going out of the frame. So that white thing we saw was a sponge. Just now? Yeah, it oh. wasn't a coral. Wow. Sclerotamnus. Okay. Hmm. Had an interesting structure from what we've seen. Can I have a reset, please? Yep. Thank you. Yep. Is this another piece of a sheet flow or just a big chunk of something? Uh, it's hard to tell from just this angle. I don't know. Someone is wondering how many dives are left in the expedition. That is not a fixed number. Um, it depends on weather and how long each dive is and all kinds of different variables. There are several seamounts that we still would like to get dives on, um, including Mercury and Loudon here over on the west from fork of the Liliokalani Ridge. Mm -hmm. And then we also want to get some dives in on Argonaut and Nootka Seamounts uh, back on the Eastern Fork. We may do more than one dive on some of these seamounts. So really the question is how many more dive days do we have? Right. So today is, uh, I don't know, what is the today? The 17th. April the 17th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we probably need to be leaving this region by the 29th at the latest. So we've got about 12... 11 or 12 more days of dives left.
our next dive. So we'll, this dive will be ending in about four hours, cool. coming off bottom in about four hours. Um, and then our next dive will be going in uh, probably in about 16 hours from now. Next dive, we'll be targeting the Mercury Seamount just to the south of us. You see the current came back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was just <laughs> noticing that. Pretty funny. Very stark difference. Oxygen concentration continues to drop as we're rising in altitude or uh, elevation here. Uh, seems like it's time for our shift change. Yep. The 8 to 12 crew is coming in, so you might hear a little bit of a commotion. All right, give us a moment while we switch over. Thanks for joining 4 to 8. Lynette, can you zoom out on HIPAC just a little bit, please? Yes, I can do that. Hey, Diane, what channel are you on? Dale. You're on mute. Nope, it's Justin. I'm not seeing. Are you at Psi left or right or data? Although, Justin, I hear you, so maybe you're talking to me on Psi left. No, I was talking to SPL because I didn't know where to talk. Oh, okay. Hey, Dwight. Why not? Trevor in a crazy, crazy sonar. You guys think we'll make the last waypoint? What's up? You think we'll make the last waypoint? Uh, no idea. It's gonna hopefully.
hopefully it's going to get steep here. We only have four hours. I think we should uh, diverge to the left side steep bit there. Thank you. No problem. Gauges look good. Roger. Good morning, 8 to 12. Good morning. Good morning. Aloha, kakahiaka. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. How do you say that in Hawaiian? It's mm, a good question. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we have it because some Hawaiians are hardcore Hawaiians. That hardcore Christian Hawaiians. Right. Are we are the King George and uh, the watch that is King George and the Carl Hunters? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Every right, year, King George okay. and the Carl Hunters are here. Or be very scared, one or the other. Did the crew have a good breakfast, everybody? I yes. think. Yes. We got a yes, and I feel like some people were just kind of just waking up for breakfast. <laughs> I definitely fall into that category. <laughs> yeah, way too early to eat. Another moved in? Sure. Bridge this is now. Some of us got to spend time in the bridge last night after our watch and um, 20 meters at 045 please it was fun watching the the bridge take the commands and see how they actually see the commands through and um, there was also another another really funny thing that we talked about last night Instead of saying slurp, you must say <laughs> <laughs> And then Kotachi went on to the SPL last night. And while the, wa the watch that followed us was doing... Um, um, while they were doing their slur slurp sample, Kotachi went and tested it out, but... That watch wasn't phased by it. <laughs> no one said anything about it. I think you just told on Katachi. Yeah, uh -oh. <laughs> threw me under the bus there. <laughs> it's okay well. though, because now we're all gonna try practice saying <laughs> instead of slurp right. <laughs> the uh, 12 to four is all gonna be solidly asleep right now, so. Oh good. Yeah. That's a good point. They will never know. Unless I tell them, but now I will not tell them. Because <laughs> we don't record any of this and put it out on YouTube and have a 12-hour rewind on YouTube. No, they could <laughs> never find out about it. <laughs> totally. Kala yalaho wai kahaku. Pakoa moliaola. So those are the different ways to say Easter in, in Hawaiian. Oops. Haoli la pakoa.
We have a we have one of Christopher's students. He was wondering what your favorite discoveries have been so far since the launch. I think we've been seeing some really cool geology on this side, uh, along with some high density coral communities. Yeah, it looks like if we uh, divert a little to the north there, the all the squiggly lines are closer together. Right where the yep. prominent thing sticks out. Basically crossing over the ridge. What's that? Going out to the other side of the ridge. Oh, if we could. Yeah, right in here. Might yeah. be pretty interesting. Okay. I don't know if the back row's down with that. I don't know what the grand plan is there. If we have to come up one side, though, I think I'd come up the steep side. No, this is our last waypoint. Um, so... Knowing this watch, I think we'll make it in the four hours that we have. Yeah. Well, I guess then the question is kind of what are we looking for after this waypoint, after we reach waypoint nine? It could be cool to go uh, check out the steep cliffs there. On the One of our uh, big objectives between now and the end of our watch is to find a a really good crust to sample so uh, oh, yeah. this would be a really sort of dark colored manganese coated rock that has the boitroidal structures on it which is sort of that little bubbly texture looking for a manganese crust can we take a look at this sponge sure seeing some Victor Gorgia as well, that's that purple octocoral. There you go. How does it feel to know that you could possibly find something yet undiscovered? It's fun, it's one of the one of the cool things about being out here. Oh that was a fail when we come out. Dwight, is there a region that tends to have more of that type of rock? Um, we, we sort of find them in uh, lower, you know, not necessarily up on the ridges or the mounds, but more down and in between and, and cracks, almost kind of like what we're looking at. There, I see. But it's also a, a rock that would have been exposed to to seawater for quite some time, uh, so not something that's like tucked up underneath the ledge or necessarily. Let's see. Nice. We're looking at a glass sponge here with some Nidarians on it. Perhaps the hydroplates, hard for me to tell. Do yellow stock crinoids move around? Um, I believe they're sessile, so they, they are sort of hanging out in one place, suspension feeding. That's a good look at this, thanks. I always like the uh, Argus view whenever it's facing Herc like that, or whenever Herc is facing Argus. Atalanta. Chris Kelly, one of our scientists ashore, has identified that sponge as uh, Lefroyella. It's a type in the family Uridae. It seems to commonly have that relationship with uh, anemones settling on it another sort of association that we don't fully understand yet. 
So if you look at the high pack map as we um, proceed up to the next waypoint, um, see how it's really steep uh, to the left side, to, yeah. to the west? So yeah. that might be kind of a cool. <laughs> we were already plotting up here. Oh, uh, good, yeah. <laughs> Con cool way it'll to go. Be up to contrasting to uh, what we did last night. I think uh, Dan's MO is find the steepest contour lines and <laughs> make a beeline for it. Yeah, find a cliff and jump off. Uh, 20 <laughs> meters north, please. Yeah, uh, with this, we can do 40 meter moves at the moment if you want. So I know it can take Rich, a long time. Can we make time that 40 meters north, please? To uh, confirm whether or not a species really is a new species. Um, but are there any that we've sampled so far this trip that we think are new species or have a hunch? Yeah, quite a few actually. Um, you know, most of the samples we're taking actually are because we have that hunch that it might be something new. Um, so we're diving on a, some seamounts that have never been visited before um, or sampled um, outside of some dredge samples for rocks a long time ago. So there really are a lot of new things down here. Okay, could someone explain a little bit about um, why we are using Atalanta over Argus, please? Because uh, I blew up Argus and <laughs> stuck on the deck. Because Dan blew it up. <laughs> By blew it up, um, we're specifically referring to its motor controllers, so. Uh, but those are in main bottle which we typically don't like to open at sea um, because either we're busy diving or it's rough enough weather that we really don't want to be mucking around in the sensitive parts of the vehicle so and we lost two of the motor controllers in it uh, we we're having an issue with one and we uh we swapped it out and um, i think we had a bad cable going to one of the thrusters and that uh took out the one that we uh, replaced, which is really unusual for the, uh, the Argus thrusters to, in theory, that shouldn't be possible because they're smart controllers. And they'll yell at you if anything is, they don't like is uh, plugged into them. But Thank you for explaining. Uh, we think a uh, short in the cable may have inadvertently put uh, high voltage DC onto the low voltage uh, all effect sensor that gives us the RPM feedback for the thruster. And the controller did not like that. And uh, that all happened the night before we were sailing. Uh, we did have the bottle open and we're troubleshooting and we decided in the interest of having a working system when we left the, when we left the dock that we would be more expedient to swap out uh, Atlanta for Argus. And it was a late night as it was. We were, the crew was up uh, well past midnight getting it ready and then getting everything battened down and secured and tested, tested, uh, secured and ready to uh, leave the dock into some, uh, into some weather. So we knew we were coming out into some significant weather. So we have uh, since ordered some more spare parts and um, as soon as we get back to the dock, we'll uh, see if we can get Argus back in action for the next cruise. Do we still have a current here that's uh, right to left? Uh, Maybe not as significant. No, I can uh, go dead stick for a minute and see which way the wind blows us. Left to right, I think. Yeah, it might be changing. Let's get some auto heading and see which way it pushes the vehicle.
appearing to be. Of course, over grounds somewhere in the 135. 152 at uh, point one, point two, something like that. Point two at one five three. Does Hercules also use a multi beam sonar to map the um, the sea floor below see it? See the chat. It can, yeah. We have a there's a device in the in the pool somewhere that's. Um, made by a company called Norbit. I think it's a Scandinavian company. It's a multi-beam that Which goes one? on the, on the brow of Hercules in the upper bumper bar. And we get some fantastic... Uh, Can you pan up a little bit? Sure. Yes. What are you after there? We're looking for a feathery coral. Might just be, yeah, might be that one. This guy here? I think so. star at its base taking offense to okay, it. Zoom in yeah. there if you want, Jeff. Oh, jumping, jumping out. That's a little cup coral there. Huh. You don't see him move like that. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ever play the game Co-op? Co-op? No, I've never. It's like a g game where you try to make a dude run by controlling his individual joints. And it looks a lot like what that <laughs> Brittle Star is doing. A couple more little corals up here take a look at. Yeah. So I think that's... Push in there if you want, Jeff. Bubblegum coral on the left. Victor Gorgia on the right. Screwed up just a little. Okay. Different brittle star species hanging on the rock. Hmm. So that last feathery star we just passed, um, Chris Kelly is thinking that was a Caligorgia, which is a type of primnoid that we haven't seen yet on this dive. Push it just a bit more if you want. Yeah, beauty. Has any DNA collected ever been not identified? Oh, sure. Oh, got a sea spider here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think there's the always some uh, spikes in the in the data record from the eDNA the that they can't there. quite identify. So that's part of what tells oh. us it's a new species often, is you um, do some DNA work on it and it doesn't exactly match anything that we have a record of. So that tells you that you might be looking at a new species along with the morphology of the individual and Thank you. Yeah, so we're looking at a, a pycnogonid or a sea spider here. So you got his proboscis down in the hole there? Yeah, it looks like it might be looking for things along the sediment there. Eat. Is the ship still moving? Yeah. Oh, just finished our last move. Oh, yeah. Argus is, or Atlantis still moving. It's trying to run us over. Okay, I need to get going there. Why is the mystery webbing hard to sample or collect? Um, it could be that it's not in our permit. Yeah, it's also just very fragile. I think we could, we could potentially uh, slurp some of oh it Oh, I could uh, kick them into gear. It's not, not too steep here, so I could catch up. Bridge this stuff. 
Thanks. 40 meters north, please. What was that, 40 meters north? Yeah, we're moving north to try and get on the... Uh, yeah, yeah. On the steep bit there. Yeah, so we're pretty much right at our waypoint nine, uh, which was the final waypoint in the dive plan. So everything beyond here is bonus. Extra credit. Are these the types of rocks you're looking for, Dwight? Not perfectly. Um, they do sort of have the texture we like, but we definitely want something more loose. And I've seen sort of the shinier, blacker looking rocks earlier, so we'll keep an eye out for that too. Push in there for a minute, Jeff. Okay. Zingid Sea Star. Zingid Sea Star. I don't know what the. I'm not crusty. sure what the fuzzy stuff is. We can push in a bit more if you want. Yeah, this Sponge is sort of that. I think that boitroidal structure that we we are interested in. Little bubbles. Looks like little bubbles. But we want to. Does of anything look loose? Um, not that I can tell so far, but. There was an eel there. I don't know where he went. This is related to the um, what Dan was just talking about, are, I believe. Are those bottles oil-filled or just airtight? Those bottles are okay. just airtight. One, one so atmosphere, as we call it. Yeah. Yeah, we can keep moving. We'll, we'll, we have plenty of time to look for this uh, rock. Might try to find one in kind of a We're gonna deviate fracture the, uh, area. West here a little bit, Paul, for some interesting sonar features. Roger. That. Have you ever encountered a goblin shark during a dive? Say I have. Goblin shark? Yes. So like a chimera? The chimera is a is the goblin shark. I don't think so. No, ghost think shark ghost shark, but there might be something similar. Goblin sharks are very ugly. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's sort of interesting Whoa. Job. nose. I got another dad joke, but I'll save it for later. Never too early for a dad joke. <laughs> Wow, we've got two in a row. I have to say both of these are later. Are any um, ship or ROV upgrades being considered to allow diving in rougher weather? Yeah, we talk about it quite a bit. Um, we're gonna do some, uh, there's some upgrades, uh, better, a better crane for uh, launching and recovering Hercules. And um, we often talk about a docking head for Argus so it doesn't uh, swing on the tuggers as we launch it. We just pull it up and do it. A docking head on the A-frame. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, it would. You'd have to change the A-frame, though, maybe, right? So it articulates? No. No? Just hang a docking head from it. Might have to change the style of lift point that's on Argus, because yeah. the the PMI grip's kind of in the way, but I have to put a, a bullet on the 6.8 that mates to the docking head. It would be super nice if it had a traditional uh, wire cast bullet on it that latched into a docking head. Kind of coming into some rubble, rubbly areas here. Yeah. Do you have some catching up? No, we're, you're in front of Argus, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I'm in a good spot here. I kind of slid off. You could just do a zoom on some loose rocks from time to time. 
I don't think these quite have this good structure we were looking at. How do you guys ensure um, samples, whether rocks or live samples, make it to the surface okay? Do you just have to slow ascent to the surface to allow the samples to adjust to the pressures? Or do the chambers that hold the samples um, have some sort of pressurized system? You can answer that one. They're cold, that's for sure. <laughs> Most things you're okay with, unless they have like an air pocket in them, something like a, a fish bladder, or something you wouldn't want to bring up um, and have that pressure change because it would blow up. But uh, for most of the things, we collect rocks um, and animals. Uh, they do pretty all right with the pressure change. Katachi, can you change George's bearing to 315? Okay, here's a non-science question. Who has the pink hard hat on deck? That is Megan Cook. Wait for their current move or for the next one? Yeah, yeah. She wears the pink hard hat. Zoom in there, Jeff. See if I can come around a bit. Hmm, not loving right. it. Can we stop the current move and then Go 20 meters at 315, please. Yeah. Zoom in there, Jeff. Looking at a yellow octocoral here. I think might be a plexarid. Oh, sorry. Always hard for me to tell the difference between plexarids and canthogorgia, both yellow octocorals we come across quite often. white and its skeleton. Little baby cup corals. Okay. Okay. Um, how does the um, recovery line get attached to her? It's already attached, and they daisy chain it to to Atalanta. And when they pull up that Atalanta vessel, they then grab that, undo the daisy chain, and grab that rope. And there is the line that we use to recover Herc. Correct. Correct. Yeah, the line. Uh, the line that is uh, attached to the tether is a spectra line. That's good for 17,000 pounds for the small one. And I think the bigger one's 30, some, some crazy number. So it's uh, a half inch line and a three quarter inch line. And that's um, fastened with a series of slip knots to the tether with some uh, quarter inch uh, Kind of yacht braid, as you would call it. It's a nice quarter inch line. Isn't the simple answer a bowl one? We just tie a bowl one knot. There you go. Yeah, the. <laughs> so I don't be pedantic. When we pull the, uh, the daisy chain, as we call it, that releases the recovery line, and then uh, Mark Pretty ties good. the bowl one. Fracture line. here. Could we take a look at some of the corals in this sure. little chasm? Go ahead, Jeff. So push in a bit. Another yellow octocoral. So maybe a black coral to the right. Go uh, tight on the black one. Yeah, that'd be great. Interesting. It looks a little different than what we've been seeing on this dive. Interesting to see both that reddish and yellow.
coloration. That's great, thank you. How does one become a pilot of the ROV Hercules? Do you have um, simulators to practice with you before you before you practice with the real machine? Can we take a look at this urchin too? Chris Kelly is interested in these. Push in a bit there, Jeff, of course. So we collected something similar to this the other day. I'm not sure if it was quite oh the yeah. species. Uh, Looks similar. A bit more if you want. Rich, this is Nav. Twenty meters at three one five, please. I assume we can see the two feet go in. Wow. That's great, thank you. So back to your uh, question, we don't have any simulators here. I mean, I kind of wish that we did because uh, you're always limited in how much time you can get. Um, so more and more practice is always helpful. Uh, my background was in engineering, which let me kind of apply to the Nautilus internship program. Um, there are definitely people who train up as ROV technicians or get started in industry and go through training programs there. Thank you. Pretty large fallen species. We're talking there. about a simulator for Hercules to uh, would also aid in our software development. <laughs> Some really testing. interesting looking sponges here. This looks like we're about to uh, jump over the cliff here. Hey. Wow. It's dark down there. Yeah, I killed a porch light. That's great. I was liking it for a while, but forgot about it. Look like all of there. Looks like there's a bunch of those cup corals off the side there. Oh yeah, quite a few of them. What is the depth limit of the ROVs you guys have on your ship? Are there ROVs that can go deeper? I know that Argus can go to 6,000 meters and Herc can go to 4,000, but that might be old information. The current uh, kind of standard is uh, 6,000 meters. So most of the manufacturers that make uh, cameras and sonars and sensors and such um, there's Coming like two, two versions you can get, a 6,000 and a 4,000. Push it in there a bit if you want to. But there are, uh, yeah, there's custom-made vehicles that can go deeper. Very expensive. So these are tetrapleura sponges. Our lead scientist ashore, Chris Kelly, is actually actively working on this genus of sponges right now, trying to better pin down their taxonomy and relations to one another. Got some commensal organisms on there, I mean, hydroid. Not sure what these are. Else enjoying a sponge meal potentially. Do the next move to the north, Katachi. What is the depth of the summit plateau um, of this mount you are ascending? The red color in the chart. Sorry, can you what is the depth there, you mean? Yeah. Katachi could tell us probably. I do some counting. Um, yeah. What are we at? Thirteen thirty-eight. How much is each contour line? Ten. <laughs> Ten, yeah. If 
we call it 11.50, is that going to be close enough? <laughs> yeah, it's outside the dive plan. We could tell you precisely, yeah. Rennie could tell you precisely down in the data lab. <laughs> but uh, it's about 220 meters shallower there. So yeah, so about 1100. 1100, yeah. yeah. Bridge, this is not. Okay, right, 20 really meters north, please. Sponge here. Would it be easier to dive during worse weather if the ship had a moon moon pool? No, no pools. <laughs> horrible, horrible places. It'd have to be a much larger vessel with a um, what they call a cursor system that basically the ROV rides on rails through the moon pool. But their uh, their big big structures are all baffled, especially built into the vessel. The bigger commercial ships have uh, moon pools with a cursor system. Of their their big vessels, like uh, of course new vessel. Looks like we have a really huge coral up to the right. This is a very sharp cliff here. Yeah. Lone pools have a life of their own. They breathe this, the uh, kind of like the wave action on a beach. Mm. They're, they're, they're just difficult to deal with. Cause, uh, really nice coral diversity on this ledge here. It's purple, Victorgia, black corals. Yeah, you know that. Can we get a partial zoom on this large one? Come down a bit, Paul. I think that's a pair of well. Bubble gum. Yeah. Lots of squat lobsters hanging out on there. There's a big coral. But wow. Nice uh, view in Argus there. Probably the most Atlanta. squat lobsters I've seen on a coral so far this expedition. Sort of see them waving their arms about, too. Wow. This is so nice and pretty. Yeah, that's a great shot. It's crazy how as soon as we get off the uh, the top, there's just so much going on. There was a question as to how many people are on board. So there are 17 crew members. So th there's just seven pe 17 people who manage the vessel itself. And there's about 29 of us, the science party, yeah? I could be wrong, though. Wow, both of these bubblegum corals are huge. Yeah. Chris Kelly saying this might be the biggest one he's ever seen. Wow. Wow. I mean, you can see just how big they are on the uh, Atalanta view. Yeah. Do we have the you lasers on? You should be able to drop down a little more now. Yeah. Get a close up of Kirk looking at the corals. There. Coral in the background there. Can you put the uh, DSC up in one of the uh, little quads there for us, Jeff? See, squat lobsters are seeing our Chirostylidae. Nice Argus uh, Atalanta shot. Yeah, yeah. It's 
tilt down this little ball. Tilt. What purpose does Atalanta serve? Multiple. It uh, provides a great view for the pilots and for the scientists like you see in the view right now. And that's pretty uh, unique to our system here with the, with the sled and the ROV combination. And it's taking some of the heave and tug away from the ROV. It's acting as a sort of heave compensator. So it's moving up and down with the ship, but it doesn't affect the position of the ROV. Uh, let's see, I gotta spin around here. We're gonna go north. Interesting, the community change from one side of the rock face to another. Yeah. Has there been any discovery of evolution from the coral or sponge to a land animal? I don't know that there have been any radiations of corals onto land. Um, or sponges. Um, there are freshwater sponges, though. Um, so a radiation into freshwater. I can come up a bit now so the tether doesn't get tangled there. There's a little cave in there that looks where like there's a, more life. There was another huge paragorgia down there, but um, long dead and now taken over by basket stars. You can see the stalk there at the bottom of the screen. Oh, yeah. Probably a similar size to the living ones we just saw at one point. Even the basket stars actually look like they've yeah. seen better days. Huh. Interesting. You wonder what which died off first, the basket star or the coral. Right. How they rely on each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Bridge this snap. Uh, hold off for a second. I touch it. I'm gonna get sorted out here. What are the contour interval um, intervals meters vertical distance in the chart? Ten meters. Ten meters. Yeah. Ten meters. Uh, we need to go. Uh, and the, there's a scale bar in the lower left corner. It might be hard to read on the live feed, but um, that gives you the lateral distance scale. Quite a few awesome. black corals on this cliff face, too. Seeing some look like bathy pathies to me. Is the ship still moving? No, I'm trying to sort out what we need to do here. Okay. Yeah, we're on. We're facing kind of a weird direction for this. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wonder if we need to just move up it more to get. Do you want to follow it for a while? If you got, it uh, oh. several options here. We could. If you'd rather come back up onto the top and then oh. drop down again later. Yeah, we could do. Or we could follow this guy and go uh, left or right, basically. I think the general trend is to towards your to, to, to the left. Yeah.
What was one of the most fascinating observations or discoveries you guys made on ex on expeditions? We seem to get that question a lot. Is it this <laughs> that was one of our this, this question is also followed by a dad joke that I'm saving for later. <laughs> I think everyone has their own opinion on what is significant or um, or spectacular. So it really depends. Even I mentioned today, last, yeah. oops, go sorry. ahead. Just getting the opportunity to explore some seamounts that have never been imaged before is really a, a special thing. Bring your head to the left for me. What were you going to say, Dwight? Yeah, this is the first time anybody's ever seen this rock. Any human has ever seen this yacht, this rock face. I was going to say that I think last night I mentioned some hydrothermal vent fields that we worked on in Guaymas Basin and Pescadero Basin off Mexico a couple years ago. It was pretty spectacular. But the um, octopus garden on Davidson Seamount off Monterey in the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary was also really spectacular. Yeah, that's one of the most amazing sites in the world. Not yet, no. How are the explorations and gear financed and funded? So a lot of that urchin? Yeah, another one of those. Uh, push in on the urchin if you want close up. Sure. I believe grants fund most of the research and funders. Yes. Most of our funding comes from the NOAA Office of Ocean Exploration. And we're partnered with the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute. That's great, thank you. Let's try uh, 20 meters at 120. Rich, this is now. Can we go 20 meters at 120, please? What is the protocol when the dive is complete and you dock the ROVs? What happens between the time um, that you dock the ROVs and I just lost the and uh, there you go, between the time you dock the ROVs and the beginning of your next expedition. Uh, two main things, I guess actually three main things happen. One is science kicks into gear. They uh, get all the samples and start processing them. Um, another is that the mapping and expedition leader get going, planning the next dive. Um, and then for ROVs specifically, we basically have a what we call our post dives and then our pre dives. And of course, when we're on a fast cadence, those happen right back to back. Um, so post dives, we basically, uh, you know, kind of prep the vehicles to be stowed, make sure that they're secured on the ship, um, rinse them down with fresh water. Uh, and then the pre dives, we basically run through just about every single functionality of the vehicles um, to make sure that everything's working normally. We put eyes on or hands on pretty much every important like bolt connection, uh, places where things can just vibrate loose um, over time, and uh, yeah, so we make sure that you know if if there's a problem, we want to give ourselves every opportunity to chance catch it on a uh, on deck before we launch. Come down, Tim. You can actually watch because typically after we we. Uh, Put the vehicles back on deck. We'll pop up. We're looking at Hercules, and you'll see the the ROV. Oh no! Uh oh, oh. trimmed somebody. Where'd that come from? I yeah. bumped it. It's right there to the left. I think what you want to do is amazing. Would this basically be the same ROV techniques that could be used to explore the oceans within Jupiter? Jupiter's moons, like Euphora, you, you, I don't know, Europa, 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 Europa and Enceladus. Yeah. Um, 
Tilt up while you're coming down, please. Tilt up, yeah. yeah. Those would be much different technologies. But they're being talked about, and ideas are being formulated, and I think there's some prototype design. So one of the big differences there is that, uh, you know, here we have a fiber optic connection to the vehicle, which lets us pilot it in real time. Um, and there's basically no way you'd be able to do that. So whatever we send to Europa or Enceladus um, is going to have to be very autonomous, which presents a lot of new challenges. So there's uh, a lot of cool algorithms and research being looked at for how to hunt for interesting science at that ice water interface or um, you know, searching for hydrothermal vents uh, autonomously. Try to look at the yellow one. Zoom in there if you want to. Yeah, it looks like a cool shot. For, um, they're looking for the plexorids. Oh, okay. And if we find one to sample it. Okay. Yeah, hard to say whether it's a plexorid or... Looks like there might be some stony coral in there too, hard to say. Yeah, possibly some madripora in there. of colors in here. Yeah. A big squat lobster. Yeah, two different types of squat lobster, I think, in there. There's a little bit of a request to zoom out briefly on the chart to see more of the macro view of the mountain. And they also said, please, whether or not that's a thing, um, I'll let you folks. How's that? I'm going to get blown into the clip here. I'm going to have to back away. So the, the previous question um, on our next cruise, the one right after this, is a technology cruise. And we will have a vehicle called Nui on board. And they are doing... Um, some of the autonomous stuff that could be used you know, in space exploration as far as they, um, they had a situation the last time I saw the vehicle where they planted it, they did a quick scan of what the, the floor was, and then a scientist on shore could basically say, hey, go look at this, and it would go off and look at something and say, hey. So it was um, some very interesting tech as far as autonomy goes. We, the, the vehicle's not connected to, to Nautilus. Can we get a partial zoom on these yellow fans down here? Sure. We're on the hunt for a yellow plexorid right now. Is Nui coming out on the next cruise or just Drix? Is, is it Nui down and five. Drix? Oh. Down five? That's Nui, course. Drix, and Mesobot. And Mesobot, yeah. Cool. Uh, zoom in a bit more on those guys now. Are you here for that, Paul? No, I'm not. I uh, sailed with the Nui and Mesobot crew last year during the tech demo, though. Right. Yeah, so you saw some of the... Oh, looks like some Coralomorphs on the rock. This is little solitary... Look like anemones, but they're like white dots at the end of their tentacles. Mesobot, as one of our colleagues called it. Could we come in tight on this one, if possible? Sure. Go ahead, Jeff. Give me the porch lights if you want, Dan. Let's see if that flattens things up a little bit here. Uh, Waiting to hear from our scientists to the right, shore, right. but they might. This guy here? Yes. This yeah, go tight there. Probably a little more if you want. That's all I got. 
is it? Oh, I'll get a little closer. Lots of coralomorphs here. My gauge on time right now is off the wall. No pun intended. <laughs> How long ago did the ship complete its move? Do you know? Uh, about three minutes ago. Can I come up a little bit, Dan? Yeah, let's move 10 meters, uh, 300. Okay. All right, I, I think that's there. there. Good enough. Look, thanks. Oh, just there for a second. Ten cool meters shot. at three hundred, please. Yeah, it is. These yellow octocorals are sort of notoriously tricky. Um, so one of our scientists ashore is interested in plexorids and not acanthogorgids, and they can be very hard to tell apart unless you have a very trained eye. Um, can we zoom out a little? There might be, I think there's another one they might want to get a zoom on. Can we zoom here? Yeah, right. Without. Or actually, this one down here actually looks different to me. Push in a bit there if you want to. How old are the giant corals the giant corals, corals. oh this, um, this comment was 16 minutes ago <laughs> I'm kind of trying my best to keep stay in order but we'll see they're very old the um, I'm not sure there. whether we're able to age paragorgids or if that work has been done um, but um, probably on the order of hundreds of years I would imagine Especially ones as large as we were seeing earlier. Those bubblegum ones. Amazing shot here. Yeah, these coralomorphs with the little white dots at the end of their tentacles are really... Coralomorphs. Charismatic. Uh, how strong is the current coming up the, the cliff there? Do we say, what do we say? Sorry, say again? How strong is the um, current that's coming up the cliff? I'm sorry. I should uh, have it's, it's present. It doesn't seem to be as strong as it was last night. Mm -hmm. And it's moving in a little bit different direction left to right across our sh screen as we face north. So we're not really facing north, so I'm not sure. How do the corals attach themselves to this, um, the rock surface so securely? So they actually cement themselves to the rock. Um, so they're, uh, when they settle somewhere, their polyps are able to secrete uh, calcium carbonate that sort of cements themselves. Well, we can keep looking, I guess. Maybe not the best spot for a sample here. Yeah, thank you. That's a great spot for a sample. <laughs> we like to clip samples. That's what Herc's brows are for. <laughs> and can we get a look at this one as well? Sure. Once my eye focuses in, you can see these coralomorphs are just like totally covering this wall. And we don't, haven't been seeing them much elsewhere. Good. 
Uh, let me come up just a little, definitely can push in. Okay, try that. Very interesting. Yeah. We're trying to look at this yellow one or the one that's more inside? The yellow one. <laughs> interesting, it goes from yellow to white like that on, sometimes even on, oops, individual branches. Lots of typing happening here with our onshore scientists that are watching live. Uh. Yeah, we're all a little bit confused by this, the color, two color in one thing happening. Not sure I've ever seen that before. Ten at zero four five, can touch you. See what there happens. was a request Bridge, for uh, the bubble cam on three, but just ten meters at zero that's up four to five, the please. master of the cameras and. Zoom, is it good? Yeah. All right, I think we're we're good on this one. Roger. So uh, thank you for the bubble cam. Pretty we'll boring shot sure. right now. But. We can uh, play around with bubble cam, and you can see the inside of Herc. So there's the primary camera. There's the zoo. Yeah. You can see all the gauges that we check pretty frequently. Sorry, pilots. Can we go a little bit to the right? We're get we're having a little bit of a discussion with our scientists for sure. Yeah, we may want to sample here. So, yeah. can you frame the shot of all the coral and hold it for 30, 40 seconds? Yeah, do. Hold it all night if you want. I'm gonna, you wanna try the porch light, Jeff? Sure. Gonna blast you here. Yep. Got a good uh, DSC of them too there, huh? I believe this one is the one we're interested in, but let's uh, keep wide for a minute here while they're deciding. Roger. Fan above on the right that we zoomed in first before the bicolor one. All right. So that's the bike. <laughs> Was it in the crack? The the colored one. Also. Okay. Yes, this is the one we're interested in. Yeah, the one at the seven o'clock. Can get a, a snip of it. Yeah, I'll see if I can get in. Push in closer and get you. Better zoom on it. While the team here is discussing, there's a question that I feel like I can actually answer on my own. How long are your shifts when diving? Do you guys get enough sleep? 
So our shifts last about four hours long. And um, whether or not you get enough sleep is there, up to the eye of the beholder. This morning, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not enough sleep from yeah, us. My alarm woke me up this morning too. Yeah. Usually me I don't. Too. Sleep, uh, usually I don't wait till the alarm and I'm up. Yeah, so we're interested in a sample of this one, I believe. This right. yellow fan. You want to push in a bit more there, so we can get a better close-up of it. Yes, good comment. When scientists get silent, you know they're frantically writing. That is true. There's a whole other chat that's um, going from the scientist on board to the scientist ashore and making sure that we can collect what they're requesting or whatever's on the wish list. Also, I don't know if it makes sense, but we do still have two Niskins left. So if this is a uh, area of high diversity, we could take a water sample too. Good call. Let's go for the coral sample first with the cutters. Get your uh, weapon ready there. All right. Biodiversity region. Very diverse. Right in the crack here, too. Could you just go over naming some How of the different oh. uh, ob life we're seeing here? Sure, so we're seeing a lot of different things here. We're seeing a purple octocoral, um, Victigorgia, some black corals are the sort of reddish ones we're seeing that sort of um, have protrusions on each side of a central axis. Those are bathypathies. A couple of different yellow corals um, and a yellow zoanthid here squat lobsters, a, a basket star at the top of the screen. Um, I think I'm seeing a, a paragorgid on the right side. Um, um, Stock glass bender. sponge. Turn what? Go to the uh, relay so isolation page. Really diverse area here. Yep. Sea spiders or squat lobsters? Uh, I think that's a squat lobster. Uh, uh, there should be a bender in there somewhere. So yeah, probably a good e e DNA spot. Well, we only Hotel, have two left, DC and we want bender. one yeah. to pair with Turn that off. rock sample, yeah. and then we usually want one at the end. So oh, maybe not then. I think we only have time for those. And I, yeah. The bender uh, sends a DC voltage through the system, which what that uh, ground pole in the crab will cause it to. Be erratic. Got it. Where do these organisms get their color and pitch blackness? Um, so oftentimes their color is sort of just a maybe a byproduct of some other um, biological process going on. So they might just have pigment in their tissue for another reason, not necessarily as um, a visual mechanism. You want to uh, put the bubble cam on the yeah. coral too to get it. Uh, where are you going to want to stow this, right? Fiona, what, what do um, we have available? Fiona. We have a few slurps. Can Are we able to slurp it? Yeah, okay. we can do a snip and slurp. Okay. Um, before you go out there, I got my hands full here balancing. Can you get the jar yeah. set up? I was balancing. Oh, oh stuff no. off of the wall. Which uh, which jar are we gonna go into for a slurp? Well, you have to change the camera first. Uh, so four. See it. Four, got it. Yeah. Let's do a flush and then rotate. Okay. Eric right. just slid into a bump there. It seems to be more stable. Here's a biologist question. Um, 
The Hercules meters show very low oxygen saturation relative to normal seawater. Is this detrimental or Is beneficial to the bi biological communities here? Just have a look at this. Yeah, so uh, that's I'll a really, really good question. Um, on jar four. Yeah. The low so. oxygen here does affect um, many organisms, and that might be why we, we aren't seeing a ton of huge okay. um, foraging fish uh, that have a really active metabolism and thus need a lot of, uh, so have a high oxygen oil requirement. Oil Whereas we see things like corals and sponges that sort Should of stay in one out. place. Are we going to slurp it or snip then slurp? We'll snip it, slurp. slurp. Can I pull out the uh, thing? No, that's it? it's, it's good. It's good there. It's All right. we want it. And uh, can we draw again which one we're going for? The one right in the middle of the HD yeah. camp. deep sea coral ecologist like myself, this is about as <laughs> diverse I spot know, you're going to see. It's really, really great to see. I would, uh, bring your pitch joint up and the yaw to the right. Yeah, pitch joint all the way up. Have you guys ever gotten accidental? Come down on the elbow. Like this? I want to be like this, Mo. Oh, got it. Yeah, something like that. If you get a little uh, closer to it, then we'll zoom in. It's a sea rainbow. Or a coral ball. Push in a bit there, Jeff. This is a coral rainbow here. Roll your wrist to the left a little, and then uh, with the jaws closed, come in and touch it. Yeah, now you see where you are. See where the tip of the jaw is touched? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to swing right the camera just a little. Do you like this position for it? Yep. Yeah. I think you gotta go towards the cliff a little with your fingers. Uh, touch it with the closed uh, blades once. So I think you gotta bring the yaw to the right just a little bit. Other way. Yeah. Now touch it one more time. That might be a bit too much. But Yep, so if you barely open enough and stick it in there and take a bite. Maybe uh, you yeah, all right, just a little more. I would go for the lobe, the second lobe out. So if you bring the jaws to the right a little bit more, you won't get the uh, back one. More more. Yeah, okay, touch it one more time. And how that looks. Yeah, that's why you shove those guys into your cutter and you got it. That much? Maybe a little more. Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. Nicely done, Paul. Nice snip. Nice. Beautiful. Go wide there for us, Jeff. Can you explain how eDNA works? Do DNA sequences from one plant animal stay intact in the water? Yeah, that's ex exactly how it works. Yeah, basically, all of these organisms are constantly, just like us, are 
there are cells sloughing off of them. And so those will go into the water column and be preserved for a certain amount of time. So by taking an eDNA sample, you can swing sort of out. swing the arm out and then come down. I might have to get an idea of the biodiversity. I might have to uh, swing the vehicle around to give you some more room there. Might be able to get it. Just gonna look up real quick. And see. Oh yeah, you got room. Not a lot of room, but some room. What is the animal that looks like twigs? Not sure what they're referring to. Maybe that whip bamboo bit coral there around there. Stuff. Uh, we're getting ready to, uh, we have some in the jaws there and Paul's trying to feed it to the slurp. <laughs> Waiting to hear Kotachi. <laughs> Is that it? That's the baby. So we're on suction, so we're just ready to release. Yep. Yeah. Just nice and slow on the release. It should suck it up. Beautiful job, Paul. Oh, yeah. Nicely done. Amazing job, guys. Is it possible to take a look at that sea anemone down there? Yeah, I was just going to ask that. Got it. To see it. Yes. Fiona? Mm -hmm. I think we see it in the uh, slip jar, right? Yep. Yep. All right. Thanks, Paul. Jar coming off. Where is the uh, sea anemone? Should be a little below our view right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to move this looks like the course. individual they slurped yesterday. Yeah, sorry, I'm just trying to get the uh, flush jar back. Can you zoom yeah. in there, Jeff? I'm going to turn the porch light off. Nope. <laughs> Let's see. And oh, yeah, look at that one. Yeah. They slurped that yesterday? They did, yeah. Uh, one, uh, another. I. Oh yeah, there's. I can see the arms in one of the jars. I was like, just blown. Did you say that we uh, will want a skin here? Negative. No. Okay. Got it. Took, uh, took him in just a little bit. Looks yeah. a little bit like relicanthus to me. Oh, yep. Asako just said that. That's an awesome looking CNN. We can really see the current. Yeah, the way the tentacles go in the current is really, yeah. really nice. Do you want me to turn off craft power? Yeah, you can turn craft power off and turn the bender back on. Are we have full zoom here? And if we could go in any tighter, can we? Thank you. Really cool. Try uh, 10 at zero, 060, zero, please. All right, Rich, this is enough. I think we're good on the zoom. Thank you. What's Tell the team's... At zero, six, zero, please. What's the team's biggest mishap when recovering a sample? Maybe you dropped one before or bumped into something. All right, I think we're pretty good with this location, guys. If we want to keep the keep moving up the slope, we'll Drop Yep. So I don't have any great answers to that, but I will say, I mean, we do take the uh, launch and recoveries really seriously. Those are, um, you know, they are important safety events where we have people and, and heavy vehicles moving in the same place. So we, uh, we're always like 100% focused for that job and, and really try to make sure we're doing it safely and diligently. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. People from my lab taught me that the first rule of ocean robotics is number of launches 
should equal number of recoveries. Mm. <laughs> number of deaths should always we be We do zero. have some experience where that doesn't work out, sadly. Probably kill the porch lights because we're getting a funky glare there. Right or not. Oh, I'm racked back. That's, That's why, why you're, yeah, yeah okay. Sorry. follow you down a little bit. Still racked back. What is going on there? With some coral and deep water plant life not having a lot of sun exposure, what determines their color? For instance, I saw yellow, orange, and purple just now. Would sun exposure change the color? Um, I don't think it would What's necessarily. Um, following us down. So a lot of them just have pigment in their tissues Can you the, uh, for other reasons. Extend on the GUI page. Dead. Yeah, I think it's coming off of my hitchhiker here. Yeah. But Ryan, it, it's kind of interesting that so many of them are, they have such oh, vibrant colors. The, uh, because if it was like purely random, yeah, yeah. you'd yeah. see a lot of brown and, I don't know, brown or gray, boring colored yeah, colors, right? right? And most of them are this like yellow, purple, red. Yeah, it makes you think that some of it might be vestigial or sort of left over from maybe shallow water ancestors. Oh yeah, maybe. Is, is that how they um, have traveled? They went from shallow to deep? Uh, there have been examples of both actually. Uh, it's actually a, a really complicated story. Right here, thanks. Right at the bottom of the slope here, I'm going to come back up. see a lot of, a lot of times we see a lot of uh, what's fallen off the cliff over the years. Did we want any of these rocks at all? I'm, I'm taking a, trying to take a close look. It doesn't quite have the texture we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Since no visible light is penetrating this deep into the ocean, is shining the lights on the organisms harmful to them at all? Do any of them react or respond noticeably? when the strong lights are on them, or do most organi organisms not respond or care? Yeah, so a lot of organisms down here don't have any um, photosensory organs. Um, some th fishes and uh, arthropods do, um, and so the light might be a little jarring to them, uh, but for the most part, things um, might not be sensing the light we're hitting them with. Fish. Try to zoom it. Looks like it's got some whiskers down there. Yep. Yeah, looks like a macrourid, maybe. Oh, something spooked him. Not sure if that was Coryphenoides or not. Didn't get a great look. Were we able to talk about where the color comes from on these corals? Like, there's quite a few comments on it, and I don't remember if I asked it or yeah, if you talked about it or not. Yeah, we were just mentioning Come back that. up towards the top here. Thank you. Ready for another move? This is the most comments that I've had to sure. read. Yeah, we're in the daytime now. A lot of people are Rich, same this is last time. Is that the same fish? Different one. 
Uh, 20 meters at 060. Oh, looks please. similar, if not the same. Sea stars here. Crinoid on the rock. But yeah, it's gotten quite a bit sparser. We've moved away from that cliff face from before. Yeah, we chased that crack down basically to the bottom, so I'm kind of floating back up here to the top. Really interesting looking lava flows yeah, here. Yeah, that sort of sheared off pillow basalt. You can see how they're kind of multiple ones, yeah. you know, one, two, three. the composition or structure of the rock change if it's uh you know formed underwater versus in air yes the uh the the lava cools much more quickly when it's in water so that's this is a really gorgeous view of these big pillow basalts and tube looking features so you can imagine like a a tube of toothpaste squeezing out toothpaste and imagine the toothpaste kind of getting crusty as as you squeeze it slowly and then it cracks and then another one kind of breaks through and squeezes out got it versus in air maybe it has time to all mix together so you wouldn't necessarily yeah see it cools such much big much more slowly so you get oh, serious overhang kind of a different looking formations awesome Really nice view. Yeah, it's very cool. A large black coral here. Dwight, does that mean if you cut them open that they're all very amorphous, the ones that are underwater? Um, well, you, you're kind of seeing, I think, along this cliff, like broken, broken pillow basalts that you are looking at the interiors of. Can we take a zoom on this rock? I'm just trying to sure. see it's yeah, look completely at that. covered. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay, so you have like a like a rind of an orange peel almost, and then the interior of the pillow is a little bit different, just cooled more slowly. Yeah, these are all those coralomorphs. Wow, look at that! Why this location all of a sudden? Yeah, we everywhere. haven't been seeing coralomorphs. Yeah, it was uh, overhanging there a bit. And I think we're close to the back to the top there. That's uh, someone asked last night what we do to relax after a shift. We just count coralomorphs until we fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We could go away now, Jeff. How high does the counter go? Will it go up to 10,000? Do not crash the telestrator, please. There's like definitely. We are under a uh, top of this. Yeah, I didn't realize overhang. we were down so low on the cliff face. I guess we're still rising up to the top, right? Yeah, we're close. There's the top right there in the top right of the. Uh, oh yeah, your your sonar view is, is yeah. changing. Looks like two stocked glass sponges kind of joined forces there. That's interesting. Oh yeah. So these coralomorphs are actually really closely related to stony corals. And uh, there's a hypothesis called the naked coral hypothesis. That these are, these evolved from stony corals and then secondarily lost their skeleton. You've got more uh, cool cliff overhang over here as well. Yeah, I'm gonna come back that way. I just wanted to come to the right for a second. I think I'm clear. Looks like some being purple greedy. stoloniferans maybe on that rock wall too. Argus getting close. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Atalanta. Oh, we're going to come that way so he can come up. Yeah. Atalanta's got a view of some of If you want to get up on top, um, we're still on the lookout for a rock for Beth. Um, Roger. And the ones that had dropped off the cliff face kind of down below didn't quite look like they had the texture we're looking for. So curious to look back up on top. 
as maybe it's a rock that wow. has been sitting in one place for a much longer period Come of time bit, as oh. opposed to being yeah. transported. Two ten meters, 300. Yeah, this cliff face Rich, is this pretty is spectacular. Sure Ryan, is. can you talk about what we're seeing in Adelanta's view also? Like, I feel like there's a lot of sponge and that. I think Sorry, that's just, uh, please. oh wow, I, it's hard for me to tell. I'm, I'm sure as we come up, we'll see a little bit of that. That should be good there. Well, just the color differences between the Atalanta cam and the Hurt cam. Yeah, see, hard for see me. in Atalanta, guys, where that all that yellow yep. is? That would uh, be we're interesting headed, to check out. Yeah. We're headed that way. Cool. Hey Ryan, this might be kind of an ignorant question, but if no oh, ignorant questions, only yeah. ignorant answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, if one polyp from a coral gets damaged or something, does that affect the health of the other polyps? Look, there's a fish. Come up a bit. Um, it can affect the health of the the whole colony. Um, Just maybe. Oftentimes they're quite resilient to an individual polyp getting damaged, though, which is why we try and take just a little snip of corals where, where we can, rather than an entire individual, because you can get all the genetic information from a single polyp and tell a lot about their morphology um, without necessarily harming the whole individual. Are, are they connected in any way besides physically? Like, do they share nutrients or anything like that? Uh, yes, they do. Okay. So I think all I think all that yellow on the wall was just those coralomorphs, just really yeah. dense. Wow, it's reflecting differently off the light of Atalanta. Well, and that that is looking through a whole ton of seawater as opposed to yeah. So the color is going to be radically different. Well, we're still mm -hmm. not quite beautiful there view yet. of this. This fish is showing off. What's sticking out at the front of that yeah. fish? Right, yeah. Some kind of sensory thing. You can tell I'm not a fish biologist. <laughs> sensory <laughs> thing. <laughs> That's the uh, Latin name. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like a codfish has. Coming off its chin. Maybe your head to the right. This is what we're at. Oh yeah. yeah, looks a little different. There's a sea spider on there. Oh yeah, these. Mm. Huh. Oh, there's oh, that yeah. yellow coming. Yeah, out. no, it is different. Oh yeah, look at all that. Yeah, can we zoom in on some of this? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. What are we looking at? Now? Are these? Oh, coralomorph. Yeah. Lots of them. This could be in your TikTok video, Kotachi, that has Adele in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not bad. We just gotta find one coralomorph that stands all alone, and yeah. then we'll pan over to these ones. <laughs> that would be perfect. Okay, go in for me. Dense. Really dense. Uluvehi vehi, the coralomorph. They're about to become really yellow too. On the yeah, there's another interesting the region up to the left. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it so just switches to uh, zooanthids over here or something. Oof. Whoa. Oh wow. Oh, what a sponge. Two of them. I saw this sponge here. Right to the right, a little more, Paul. Yeah. And then uh, you can come back down a couple meters. Really cool. Look at that. Whoa. Um, maybe five, ten. I've been. I mean, this rock face is just absolutely encrusted. Yeah. And it keeps going. You can kind of see in the Argus view. It's.
come in tight whenever it's convenient. Sure, yeah, go ahead, Jeff. A few different glass sponge species on here as well. Yeah, these look like zoanthids to me. Such a stark transition. I wonder if I know it. there's one any one to the other. territory beef between the zoanthids <laughs> and the <laughs> coralomorphs. <laughs> These ones only wear yellow. <laughs> you wear yellow, you must go to the that gang. rock. The gangs <laughs> of the deep. Da -da 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 -da. I'm da -da. wondering if there's like a Romeo and Juliet, like one, <laughs> <laughs> one that's crossed the lines. Go <laughs> white again. Wow, amazing. Sorry, I should have done the Ken Burns uh, slow reveal. Could we take a look at, I think, this black coral too? Sure. We're looking for one with a sort of secondary growth off the side of it, and I think that's one of them. Yeah, go on, make a zoom in there. It's one of our scientists ashore is studying hybridization between different black coral species and they think when they see secondary branching that might hmm. give some sort of insight into that. So we, yeah, we might want a sample of this one. Roger. Is this going to be another snip and slurp? She said she we cut uh, 10 meters at 125. Oh, we might not be sampling, actually. Sorry. Sure. I think we might have got one earlier. Rich, this is Nev. Got it. Um, while I was sleeping. Can we go 10 meters at 135, please? But still very interesting to see, and I think helpful to get a good zoom on. That falls in, is it, Jeff? Let's see where I want that branch there. Do you know if these hybrids are able to produce offspring, or is it like a meal situation? Yeah, I don't know at all. I think it's sort of at the bleeding edge of what we know about hybridization in corals. Um, Anything on or about the rocks that attracts such diversity? Zoom is great, thank you. Okay, let's make the white again. Uh, not necessarily about the rocks, but I think that the different surface texture of the rocks are more conducive to animals being able to get a grip or not. A really nice furia glass sponge down here too. These rocks are pretty amenable to being colonized by so many things because once again they're vertical so um, sediments not really accumulating on them and so lots of sessile organisms can um, settle here but we see lots of vertical rocks that don't have such high density like this so this is a yeah. special place shift my view for just one second Dan. Yeah, I see it coming up. Does the zoanthids all count as one single single organism almost cause it's almost because it's all connected then it's like one hum humongous animal? Um, yeah, I believe they do reproduce, uh, or they can reproduce asexually, so um, a lot of them may have the same genetic makeup. Looks like something got covered by that yellow. Yeah, they're taking over. Yeah, this is a great spot for them. Even growing over some of the other 
things that were formerly on the wall. What causes this special place to be so densely concentrated? It's due to the current and vertical rocks, perhaps? Yeah, those definitely contribute. Um, not sure what other factors it could be. Looks like there's a bunch of yeah, corals just coming up. Pretty yeah, large nice overhang here. white primnoids here. I wonder if this angle protects them from predation. Like, if a sea star tried to climb and eat something, it might fall off. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> I do see an urchin on there that might be able to eat them. And some cup corals now. Yeah, and then all of a sudden the zoanthids just kind of end. Hmm. Tilt down just a little bit. So I've got a question just about kind of this, the process of underwater science here. Do, when we take those kind of close zooms on some some things, but don't necessarily take Pick a sample. Got to come yeah. right around in here. Does that uh, actually come down or tilt down? You want me to come down? Just tilt down. Got it. Um, does that ever help, like scientists ashore, you know, identify that species are in certain areas or help them answer questions? Yeah, you can really tell a lot, um, especially you know some of the, the taxonomic experts ashore can really tell a lot just by getting a close zoom and seeing. For oh, example, like the polyp up. morphology or the, right. the way a certain coral is branching. Um, it can really tell us a lot about um, where it fits in its certain group of organisms. Um, so yeah, the zooms are really, really valuable, um, especially in cases where we can't necessarily get a sample. Squat lobsters on what looks like a primnoid octocoral there. If we get a zoom here, I think we have some of those zoanthids with other, something growing over the zoanthids there. Go ahead, Jeff. Let's we'll start pushing it. That's where they're, they're mixing. It's the mixer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tighter as I come down if you want. It looks like those cup corals. It's like zooanthids, different zooanthids, maybe. Interesting That's how great. this Thank rock you. kind of juts out right above the ROV again also. Yeah, yeah. nice overhang. It's a cool view of darkness into the coral that hits the wall. You can see the uh, tether bouncing into itself there in the rear. Yeah. Uh, chase me up just a little bit now. Yeah, it's really it's interesting nice to me the sort of zonation that occurs on a wall like this. It, the community just really just changes location to location. Right now it's these white 
Primnoid octocoral seem to be the dominant species. Some pink hemichorallium there, and also some bubblegum corals. I sometimes catch myself holding my breath and feel like I'm actually <laughs> diving. Wow. So much color. Yeah, really. Is Argus the same as Atalanta? They're super similar. Uh, there definitely are some differences, but their uh, their role in the dive is is the same. Awesome. Thank it's hard you. for me to focus in one spot. There's so much to look at. <laughs> no. oh, I wonder. Another if big bubblegum coral here. Yeah, they like it right at the top there, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Huge. The stalk is so impressive. That's like almost the width of. Hercules. Must be probably some upwelling current here that is catching all its food. Typing on here is so different compared to what I'm used to, and by the time I get back to land, I'm just going to be typing like a mad lady. Are mm. squat lobsters filter feeders? Uh, yeah, they do pull particles out of, um, or a little zooplankton out of the water column. I think they're pretty opportunistic as well, so if they found something in some sediment or pluck it up. So while we're up on top, once we're done looking at these corals, um, we're still on the lookout for a rock for Beth, and I'd like to look up on top, Roger. see if there's anything loose. Just let me know when you're ready for a move. Yeah, just trying to decide. There's a wall on our left there. The, uh, Very cool rock formation up here. Yeah. With some big sponges here and there. You can see in that little big crack Let's to the right. Ten, 10 at uh, zero 090. Zero. Bridge, this is now. 10 meters at zero 090, zero, please. Wow. Not seeing a lot of... No, muscle. it's really sort of bare up here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the top is... Nice little empty. Wow. Top. Well, i got to look a little closer. Maybe there's something in there. Are those little cup corals? I think there are some small ones on the surface here. Current depth, let's see. Um, Herc is at one, yeah, sounds good. 1,311 meters. And then looks like Arg uh, Atalanta is at 1,297. I think a part of the name mix-up is that everything on our monitors say Argus rather than Atalanta. <laughs> uh, 
Um, could we get the high pack, please? And is this guy look loose here? No. No. Well, can I have a closer look? Look over something loose or pryable. I don't think I can poke you. it. If I know it, it could be. You want me to? I get yeah. lucky. Give it a job close. Oh, no. What did you want from high pack? Oh, the, the viewers on, online just wanted to see no. it. I'm going to have to turn they're, the they're uh, arm back on. Requesting yeah. it. You want me to turn off the uh No, you don't again? have to do the bender for this one. You want some spazzy. Hammer it a few times. Ten year in jail. I just with I feel like I know the answer. Did you bring the jackhammer with you? <laughs> yeah, we did. Craft arm. <laughs> <laughs> we okay. do. Uh, We're trying to kill that thing anyway. <laughs> yeah. We do a jaw closed punch with it. Antonello's getting quite good. She punch it and send the ROV spinning around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got arm cons. Arm coming on. Bless you. While they're grabbing this rock out, I'm going to answer this question. Why are these corals and sponges located on the vertical rock face? Um, and that's because on the top, the snow will fall on. Whereas on the sides, they won't get as much sediment that falls upon them. And then there's also, oh, knock, knock. Anybody home? <laughs> no. Sorry, no. I don't think that one's budging. That's all right. Now we know. One, one or two punches is enough, Paul. Yeah. They don't move after that. <laughs> <laughs> They're just feet here. Even up against the rock. Can't say we didn't try. I had to be really sure. Bless you. We do have to still fix it until we get a new one, so. So we'll probably have better luck in little cracks. Yeah. Mm. Or, nice time or, or not break little off. cracks, but wider cracks. I didn't see anything on the top of this guy. No. Oh, that must be the edge again. Is that the same yeah. one we went over? Yeah, Roger. Right. Should I turn the arm back off, or we're OK at 20? Oh, it's saying 20. That's orange. It's still trying to make up its mind. Yeah, let's stay up here for a little bit longer, if you guys don't mind, just to try to get get closure on this last rock sample. I'm going to jump over here. There's a Crevice. bit of a wall here, about 10 yeah. meters away, so I might have some... Uh, Whoa. Wow. And you can see the kind of the broken up stuff there in the Atalanta's view. Wow. Definitely some of the most interesting geological formations we've seen on this dive. Yeah, 200 kilo ohms. Should I tell, turn off the arm? No, I can leave it on. I'm okay. Pop over to the wall, <laughs> wall here, see if we can find a rock. Huge Brazingid sea star in there. That was a really big one, yeah, yeah. with really long arms. This would be a rock climber's paradise. Bridge, this is not. Hold what you got, could touch. What's up? Uh, hold position for a minute. Sorry, hold position. Mm. Hello, not assault. Quite significant wall here in our sonar, so we should be able to find a rock here somewhere. Whether they're the right texture, I can't say, but. Yeah, there's looks like some good good candidates around here. Is there that maybe loose? Or in there? That might be a little large, yeah. Oh, too large. Uh, oh yeah. Just see little sea star there's over there. Wow, lots of dead sponges. Yeah. Could uh, look around here for the optimal one if you want. I think it's quite uh, broken up. Maybe something here. Those look uh, it's hard to tell. Attached. 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 Yeah, that's probably attached. Inside that crevice. It's just hard to get the vehicle down in there. Mm. We need more yeah, of like a base of a little wall. There's some uh, there's some loose ones in here. Do we? I don't know if that's the type she's wanting. <laughs> 
Uh, test for we need a zoom on it. Kind of a square looking one there to the left and to the right. You can zoom in there, Jeff. I'm going to drop okay. down a few meters so we got some room. Gotcha. I think some of those are maybe. Where those. the lasers are? Or down? Or Just uh, under them, that kind of brick square looking one. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. There's uh, that guy there, maybe. It could be this. There, uh, can we zoom? I yeah. Go ahead. Go wide again, Jeff. Or you want to zoom in on well, it? Well, I want to see it up close, the texture of the rocks. Yeah, go ahead. A little bit bumpy, not perfectly like we were seeing before, but this might be right. the best chance we get. Uh, go wide again, Jeff. Yeah, if go wide again, and then if you tilt down a little there was some more yeah there's a pile of them here what about that right near the slurp down on the bottom i don't know yeah if this loose. this guy or uh i'm not sure what's loose here up here yeah. maybe all right yeah this this one looks i don't know if you can dislodge it though one way to find out can uh nice go a little wider there jeff so yeah, poke around in there, see which ones move, if any. Uh, no. oh, oh, yeah. Maybe. Saw something move. Yeah, that's a, that looks like a pretty good one, if you can get it. zoom in a little bit <sighs> that should be good thank you oh, nope. uh, they're both loose there a little slippery. There we go. Nice one, Paul. Mm. Ooh. It's all right. It's in a better position now. Totally. Okay, so we'll put this one in the front right. Yeah. Front right, right here. Yeah, they're all this in there. Do we test the water for microplastics? We have on previous expeditions. We had a PhD student that was that was her thing. Uh, also one of our science managers. Getting some. Hold that for a sec. We'll Hold get a it. capture. We were on grip force two, and the arm is uh, jumping around a little bit. That's yeah. It's shoulders gonna. Sit there and pulse with the bender every couple of seconds. Point. Yeah. Point. Can we zoom on it a little closer? And let me know if you want me to do a spin. Yeah, bring it. Down yeah, I like this uh, lumpy texture that we see. This is a good one. There. Yeah, I can zoom yeah there. very good. Oh. Ah, oh, that was that was a cool move. You can change your grip force on the fly. Got right. good, good pictures. Um, one more time. Rotate left, Paul. On the way. One more. The jaws are in the way. Yeah, hold that there. Sorry, the, uh, the shoulder definitely is bumping around. Quick zoom there, Jeff. That's good. That's good. Nice. All right, you're good. All right. Front right, I can't, not, 
is it Lambda or? Omega. Omega, sorry. Is there anything floaty in the uh, front? No, uh, no, just Beth's rocks. Great. What are some of the items um, or specimens that are on your wish list? Yeah, so there's um, oh, nice, nice job. A lot of organisms on our on our wish lists that um, have been seen in other seamount chains in the Pacific, um, but we want a Niskin here too, guys. Are rather. as of yet undescribed or unknown what they actually are, and so we're on the lookout for those sort of things and. And there's other things we sort of just opportunistically see and we think might be uh, Is this the, useful. Uh, the green one? Looks like the green one, yeah. Let me zoom in just a little bit. That's good, thank you. Is that five or six? We're going for five. number five. Nice. You ready? Yep. I'm All ready. ready. That's good. Got All it. Right. Beautiful. Fastest claws in the West. <laughs> <laughs> nice sampling, guys. That was good. Thank you. Good find on the, uh, the rock. Yeah. What facilities do you have on board to process, preserve, and inspect the specimens you collect? Yeah, we have a, a dedicated wet lab space where we um, bring our samples after the dive, um, look at them, preserve them, uh, take pictures, etc. Awesome. Are the scientists on board able to do any uh, testing or inspecting? on board the ship or do specimens or do specimens have to be sent to a lab for further testing yeah a lot of a lot of things happen back at shore um, we are breaking open some of the rocks and preparing the, the ferromanganese crust for further tests and I know the geologist on board is taking a look at some of the rocks cutting them open um, yeah, a lot of the more detailed sort of chemistry and DNA work on the biology um, happens back at shore. How confusing is Carl taxonomy? <laughs> really confusing. Um, I'm really grateful there are coral taxonomists, and I'm also really grateful that I'm not a taxonomist because uh, it's such intricate work. And uh, I'm always so impressed by the depth of natural, natural history knowledge that uh, coral taxonomists have. And We'd, other, all types of taxonomists, really. We've done some work in the <coughs> Discovery Corridor off the east coast of Canada. And uh, we put an array on the front. We basically filled the, the front uh, sample box with 48 different little compartments, little small compartments that go around and uh, get 10 so cent getting centimeter full, huh? clips. A yeah. couple slurps left maybe. Mm -hmm. And that last Niskin. Mm -hmm. Cool. Interesting sponge corals that we have and that are coming up. Yeah, some looks like hemichorallium there, the pink coral. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of Formerly living things, and then if you look down, if you sponge will. up here. That's quite interesting. Top down. Uh, we saw it earlier. So to the T. What is it? Do you want me to come down to, or just the no, just top down? Yeah, yeah. pleura, maybe. Want to see the black coral or the sponge? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, can we look at the sponge okay, a little there. higher up? I 
Have any live specimens collected appeared to be infected by a marine virus or um, bacterial? Is there a way to differentiate physical damage from damage caused by a potential infection? No, that would require some pretty sophisticated lab work, probably, so we wouldn't be able to tell at sea. Um, or at least I wouldn't. Maybe some people could. Football there is giving us a good up and down view with Atalanta's camera. Yeah. How much the boat is heaving? Yeah. Really nice view of this sponge. Um, I know this is a group of sponges that our lead scientist ashore, Chris Kelly, is actively working on. hitting it is really cool. Bonk. <laughs> Vehicle Beautiful. hitting the wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good, thanks. We're gonna drop down here. There's a diversity under the overhang down here below us. So. Fishy? Perhaps? Is that a eel? Yeah, he's saying, Looks come like down it. this way. There's a cool <laughs> garden down here. There was a request for the... Um, what did you want? The bubble to see below the crazy cliff. Hmm. If you... I feel like if you look at the Atalanta view, you can also see down to... Atalanta does a much better shot of that. Like yeah. Than the bubble camp does. Yeah, so the Atalanta view has a better view of looking down the cliff. I'm going to turn the porch light on, Jeff. Okay. Interesting. Thank you, there. Jeff. Yeah, the la layering, rubbly. We're just chatting with the scientists ashore if, um, as we climb up slope here if we start to see the transition to uh, carbonate rock which a lot of the guillots in the area have at the top, at the summit. Would that hyaloclastite we saw earlier be an example of that on one of the other dives? The pyroclastic? Or no, that would be volcanic still. Okay. So like under, right under, off. Um, Overhang. Yeah, yeah. This would be sort of a next phase of geologic evolution after the seamount um, sank if it was subaerial when it was erupting, uh, once it sank below the, the sea surface and carbonate started to grow. Have a look at the graveyard here. Yeah, seeing some sponge debris. When was the last ship move? I just want to get a sense of if and oh. where Argus is heading. A while ago. Um, Argus is right under the ship now, almost. Ready for another move? Uh, um, yeah, um, let's try and move to the north. Bridge, this is now. We do 20 meters north, please. You see, I'm right against this. Uh, yeah, I'll come back up once we start moving. Just like to drop to the bottom once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Asking about the twig-like animals that are on the sponges, what are they? Um, that varies. But I'll come back. Down yeah, twig-like. Twig-like. I think maybe they're referring to um, and come up under some you. hydroids that yeah, we've yeah, seen yeah, growing on sponges quite a bit. 
There's a lot of toy glide organisms. <laughs> <Yeah. down laughs> the legs of the squat lobsters and the sea yeah. spiders are twig. Right, that, that could be it too. There's another red twig-like organism there also, if you ask me. I feel like the, the crinoids, the sea stars, and uh, uh, squat lobsters, and they're all like white, red, text co colored. But good mm. question. Some sediment down there. Yeah. Heard a core sample? Yeah, push core time. <laughs> Pushing to the core time. That would be challenging. to uh, get coming up, I think. Are you ready for me to come up? Yeah, here. Uh, yeah. 10 meters away from the wall there. That's an indication that there's a lot of diversity up above us, or there was at one point. There are also basket stars that are twig-like. True. So lots of things they could potentially be talking about. Yeah, totally. Should be good there, Paul. Yep. For a minute. Pocket of sediment, and I stir it up. Zoom on the eel if you want. I wonder, Ryan, do you know what this is we're looking at here? This uh, fish we're seeing? Mm -hmm. Could venture a guess. Uh, it looks like a macro urid to me. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Could also be an ophid. Yeah, Chris Kelly is saying ophid. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Ophid. Something about the English language that can be very challenging sometimes. Latin is tough, yeah. Like glass sponge here with a basket star attached and a crinoid. Looks like the skeleton of a bamboo coral over there. Yeah, I can't tell if it has any living polyps on it or not. There looks like some fuzziness to it. Looks like a. It looks or it might have been colonized by something else. Hard to tell. Can we get a partial zoom on? this bamboo. Yep. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Still has some polyps. Yeah, you can see the skeleton. Goes on yeah, forever. It's quite a bit healthier as you get further away from the base. I wonder if there was like a sea star eating it and it just kind of fell off. Uh, maybe. <laughs> that reminds me of the imagery that we, or that 
Sea star we saw it last night with its stomach outside of its body. Oh yeah. Eating. That was very cool. Seeing some black corals near the base of this bamboo coral. That is a really long bamboo coral. That is a long bamboo wow. coral. You can kind of see how long it is in the Atalanta view. We've got an Iridogorgia here. We can take a partial zoom on that. Sure, go ahead. Too. It looks like Iridogorgia. Did you say Feridogorgia? Iridogorgia. Iridogorgia. Yeah, like iridescent. Mm. Katachi, would you mind zooming out, Hypac, just so I can see where this final um, shrimp making a home in there? In Someone the asked Still what. Up. Keep going a little more. A little bit more. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, one more. I guess that's the end of our detail. All right. And the depth way up in the upper right corner of that, you think, is 1,100? Uh, oh, that was there, uh, so it's a few a more. A little bit less, so maybe uh, 1,000. 10, 1050. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we won't make it that far. Beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, it really is. Wow. All right, uh, all good on the zoom. Thanks, pilots. Thank you for the correction. Orfitted is Greek. Apparently, um, oh, it are, is. are there any pharmaceutical interesting jo genre um, or species discovered at this depth yet? Uh, yeah, there are, and there, that's a really active field of research. Um, not something I'm that plugged into, so I won't really speak on it at length, but uh, I know a lot of people are um, interested in some of the um, compounds from corals and sponges and their potential use as pharmaceuticals. Yeah, we, can we get a zoom on this really interesting yeah, association ahead, yeah. happening here? It's yes. like a basket star, Bazinga sea star, and some purple stolonifrens. Looks like the stolonifrens are growing over what was formerly a sponge. Yeah, interesting. Very cool. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. What does high pack mean? I actually have no idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the name of the software that we use for navigating uh, the ship and, and vehicles mm -hmm. sort of in a big picture way. And it's also the software we use to plan all of our mapping transits and mapping grids that we do for multi-beam sonar data acquisition and uh, the bridge has the same display that we have here and so when we communicate with the bridge they're looking at the same software and the same information so we can see the position of the ship and the position of the vehicles and the background map and the contours and waypoints and uh, other details about what information we're collecting we can do range and bearing and dive planning all within one interface it's pretty handy awesome so i think the name comes from hydrographic package that's what that means uh, interesting yep makes sense looks like one of those russian beard hat sponges that we collected on an earlier dive on this expedition as well over here is that so the big time that we see above there, that's the length that we've been going on for the dive? That's the official time for the whole ship, really, for the, all the data that we collect. It's, uh, it's oh. um, UTC, universal time. Uh, it's the same as Greenwich Mean Time. I see. Thank you. There was a question as to how much more longer we have to the dive, and I just wanted to get my facts right. But it's about, um, we're supposed to finish at 2 p.m., but we're actually going to start pulling off the seafloor er yeah. earlier yeah. than that. So if we get up to 1,100 meters depth, 
uh, by the end of our watch, it should take, what, about an hour to recover from there? Yeah, that's about right. So the next watch will have maybe 45 minutes or an hour to keep exploring and then... So we have about 2.5 hours left on the seafloor. Yeah. Okay, it could go away. So this is a Bathydorus glass sponge. Ready for movement. Folded. One oh, we're gonna looking at. come back around and run of uh, Argus here and then we'll come up. Spelling for the software. Hmm. Spelling? Yeah. H-Y-P-A-C-K. There you go. You had it right, person. Awesome. Another very long bamboo coral. Not sure if I see healthy polyps further up. There's a lot of software all over the place in here. Oh yeah, I see oh yeah. Tons of computers, eight or 80. I know something that has to do with eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's 80, 80 in the KVM system, right Jeff? Yeah, 80 wow. sources in the KVM system. Wow. Most of which are computers of some sort. Amazing. It'd be fun to count how many things are being displayed in the van right now. <laughs> I'm trying to always lose count. I believe this is the crinoid we collected the other day as well. Mm. How many cameras in the router, Jeff? 60-something, 60, 60. Well, if you, if you include uh, computer sources and things like okay. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like 64. Is that a fish way down below in, in the deep there? Oh, yeah. Could I? We've got a squat lobster here living dangerously. Living life on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's at least like 30 different displays that we're kind of checking between and paying okay. attention Let's to in the front row here. 20 meters, uh, let's do 20 meters north. North or bridge, this is enough. Little, little note after nav contacts bridge. 20 meters north, please. Oh, assuming crinoid. It's trippy seeing those things swim. Mm -hmm. That one didn't look like it was doing much swimming, more just <laughs> falling. falling. <laughs> Gravity assist. <laughs> Another rock face here with a lot of, uh, maybe zoanthids again on it, maybe corallomorphs, not sure. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Get a partial zoom on it. This viewer would like to see more details on software and gear used on our website. Greetings, Aust Austria. That'd be a pretty lengthy web <laughs> web page <laughs> with all of our software on. Uh, Maybe we're just uh, listing the software. Roger. Potentially a ferried glass sponge there, and yeah, looks like there more corallomorphs on the wall here. Another yellow thinking plexorid. Is the only thing That's a great look at this wall, thanks. Another bathy pathies there. What we think is bathy pathies. 
Are we connected with Woods Hole? Oh yeah, for sure. They're a partner of OET's through the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute. There'll be about 10 people from Woods Hole Oceanographic here, Institution right? out bigger. here on the next leg. Yeah. Wow. Cool. How many years did Dr. Ballard spend at Woods Hole for uh, OET? Yeah, 30, I believe. Um, he was uh, assigned there as a naval officer right around Vietnam time when they were first developing Alvin and some other deep submergence tools. Thank you. Stayed, uh, stayed there till the late 90s and he's still affiliated there. What is, um, what's going to happen to Herc when to, uh, 10 meters, zero, three, zero. Perch, this is the... When what? When Herc retires. 10 Herc's meters at zero, three, zero. Hercules Never two will be born. <laughs> <laughs> that is an interesting question. Uh, There's probably a lot of discussion about it. Yeah, we're hoping to, uh, have a museum there in San Pedro and have it on display at the uh, Alta Sea facility. Herc will never retire. <laughs> He'll last forever. <laughs> it never retires, it just upgrades. of this vintage, uh, Ventana and Ropos, that were built in the 90s, are also still actively yeah. diving. I think both of those vehicles are uh, built in the 90s. Mid-watch so. stretch. Definitely needed to open some of the doors here. <laughs> Someone is introducing their young cousins to Nautilus Live at Easter dinner, and the youngest has asked if we have found any Easter eggs yet. <laughs> Not underwater. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of Easter egg decorating yesterday. And, and are, are those hidden now? Throughout. I suspect when we go down for lunch in about an hour and a half, we'll see a transformed mess area <laughs> and some decorations. It'll be a, 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 more like a snack kind of a lunch, right? In an early, early dinner, right? Yeah, I mean, anybody can find snacks, but we're going to hold off till mid-afternoon. Can we take a look at this sponge up here? Sure. Again, another wall covered in these coralomorphs. We go back away just a little. Wow. They're pretty prolific when they find a spot they like. Okay, Jeff, we can push in a bit. Sorry, Ren, which one? The fuzzy one? The, yeah, fuzzy one, please. Okay. This is a good question. Did Nautilus get any bigger or extended last year? Okay, I can push in a bit. It's like a branching wall area. Yes. They lengthen the after oh. deck 15 feet, so it's a longer ship than it was before. And they added some extra cabins up on the bow. And a giant crane. Yep, big yellow crane. Banana crane. Oh, interesting. This is actually a foray at glass sponge with 
uh, Antipatherians growing on it. So it's not Come down that sort of hairy variety of sponge yeah. we've been seeing. Tugged. I've got a uh, cliff off to my right that's yeah, 20 see. meters away. Where it should be. <laughs> How is it decided when each team will go on watch? I think these teams are, or the watch times, like, are from way back when. Yeah. Like, when people would see fairing. And there's actually different times to be followed. But Yeah, we worked it out as a team. Ready for the, le the leaders of each department kind of weighed in on what they thought would, would be best. And we modified it slightly on the first day or two of the expedition. But yeah. Another move dead. Are there any recent tech upgrades on Herc and, Ar sure. and Argus? Uh, if so, what are they? 315. Bridge, this is not. Well, big things recently are a new uh, USBL uh, system. So we're using a Sonar 9 USBL system now. That's our um, subsea navigation tracking system, which includes okay, uh, Go instruments ahead, on each of the vehicles for communicating uh, with the ship through uh, acoustic sort of telemetry. And that gives us a little more precision and accuracy on our tracking. And um, we have a really nice still camera, the Sextant. Uh, that's being used now to do our still captures. And there's a 4K camera, although it's not on the vehicle now. Um, I think it was tested during a shakedown cruise. Yeah, we had it on during the last expedition. All oh, right. Yeah, beautiful images. Um, that's pretty much it. There's been a lot of upgrades to the ship and to the control van. But that's about it for the vehicles, recently anyway. New lights, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Mesotechs are original. No, uh, we have a, a new Mesotech as well. Oh, is there? Yeah, multi-frequency head on Herc. Oh, nice. I'm trying to think what, what is original. Is the Octans? Yeah, the Octane is original, original bow packs, thrusters, yep. manipulators, flotation, and buoyancy. What's the Octane? It's the uh, survey grade gyro. I am you. Fiber optic gyro. Yeah. Inertial navigation system. It's called all sorts of different things, isn't it? Hey, Dan, I've got a uh, weird problem. My GUI does not seem to be working. I hate it when that happens. Is it frozen, is it? Mm -hmm. Everything else works. Just the... Uh, yeah, you can close the program and restart it. Anyone got our air, air temperature here? Someone, because we are not necessarily... Oh, even the yes button. The same well, as Hawaii try. anymore. Uh, might be on Grafana. Ship, nope, I'm looking at a wrong, different number. All right, that looks better. Yep. So we're still down at 13, we, we actually dropped lower, we crossed 1300. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> I'm kind of following my nose down the cliff here, I can <laughs> come back up. Is the ship still kind of moving us towards the northeast a little, or? Uh, right now we're moving towards northwest a little bit. I did a pull bit us of off a the wall. Yeah. Bit of a zag there to get. Uh, oh, yeah. The Easter eggs are in disguise as colorful corals and sponges. <laughs> Agreed. Which one has money in it? <sighs> Priceless. <laughs> going down forever. Interesting okay. note on the color discussion we're having earlier. So we've noticed that the color is much more vibrant colors as we come up in depth from about below 2000 where we were yesterday. So Zoom in on um, the, the colors may actually have more of a, a 
function than was previously thought because this is the sort of zone where bioluminescent organisms occur. Um, and so many of these um, organisms might be um, colorful, colorful um, and uh, fluoresce. So potentially if we turn all the lights off, could be able to see, excite some fluorescence in some of these corals, especially that have bright pigments. So not just a metabolic byproduct, as we were saying earlier. The bands. Thank you. The bamboo bands. No, looks like a bamboo coral. Did you get the temperature in degrees C? Okay. No. I did not. Come up. 17.8. 17.8. I think uh, 65. Fair. Double it and add 32. I thought it was add 30, but I might. Do you know wrong. the conversion? I do not. <laughs> So doubling it would be 34, and adding 32, 66 or 60, yeah. That's chilly. And that explains why I'm always wearing a bunch of layers when I come <laughs> out, of, <laughs> out of the ship. And all the guys and gals from the Northwest are still wearing shorts and t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely. <laughs> we can kind of pick out the people who live in these tropical areas from those who come from places that are regularly this temperature. Let's try 20 to the north now. Nice looking Rich, this is near to Gorgia down there. Is it cold for you, Fiona? Is this cold for you? Touch yeah, north, a bit please. cold, but kind of like my legs a little free. Yeah. Not much of a long pants type of person. Mm -hmm. Is that the one we looked at before, or is it a different one? It's a different cluster. Do we ever leave deep underwater time-lapse cameras as we go? Was this ever done before? Yeah, there are some areas with fixed cameras. Yeah, sure. there's uh, ocean observatories, um, which are fixed cabled systems that have sensors and cameras attached to them that don't move through space. They they do the time lapse sort of data collection and imagery. Awesome, thank you. Oh. Are the autonomous rovers being tested on the next expedition in preparation for space exploration? Um, powered by nuclear resources like recent Mars rovers? Is power source longevity one of the more lo challenging aspects along with software? software? Yeah, so power is super important in space. Um, it takes a lot of power to transmit signals and the further out in space you go, uh, the harder and harder it is to do anything like solar. Um, I think there are some concerns with nuclear on like Enceladus and Europa like I'm not sure we want to you know put uh, nukes in those kind of systems we're definitely you know part of uh, part of the interesting thing is that in places that we're potentially hunting for life in outer space um, we have to be really careful about planetary protection which really means not bringing any earth life into these other places um, so I know that there is a proposed Europa lander that is in development. We'll see whether or not it uh, meters east, please. gets fully funded to, to launch and fly. Now. But that would run off primary Ten batteries. Meters, please. Um, uh, yeah. On top of it? Awesome. No, he can oh. divert. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, I, stop I'm the current move and separate. I'm enjoying this Atalanta view where you can really see the daisy chain. And that days in inside of that daisy chain, we have the line that helps us recover Herc. And I know there was a bunch of comments on how we attach the line to recover Herc. And so within that daisy chain is the is a line that recovers Herc and the tether that connects the two. And I remember there was a maybe 
we um, we stumped Paul on a question from one of our students ashore about what is the umbilical cord. And the uh, the umbilical cord is the six eight that runs from Atalanta or Argus up to the ship. Awesome. Back to the mothership. The point six eight is the diameter of that steel cable, steel armored cable. Right? 0.68 inches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not metric. Carries vital nutrients like electricity signals. Yeah. For you, um, there was a question. Where are the members of these shifts watch from? Where are the members of this shifts watch from? Where are we from? Us? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can start. Want me to start? Okay. Um, oh, I'm getting pulled around here, Dan. Yeah, I I'm moving, uh, that way. live the on that the way. island of Oahu in Hawaii. Come down five Precisely meters. in Kahalu'u Ahui Manu. And I consider myself from the ocean because I grew up all around the ocean. Not necessarily in one specific place. Ryan? Yeah, so um, I'm currently a graduate student at Temple University in Philadelphia. Uh, grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. Are we still fully stretched out here? Yeah, I'm Dwight. I'm from auto, auto the there. smallest state in the country, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. It's also known as the Ocean State, so mm. we're very connected to the ocean in Rhode Island. Fiona? Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I'm Fiona. I'm from the island of Saipan in the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Paul? I am uh, from California. I grew up on the East Coast in Washington, D.C., and then um, I've been in California for school and work since then. Dan, born and raised in San Diego, California, currently Portland, Oregon. Katachi. I was born in Japan, grew up in China, and then I uh, go to school in Rhode Island. And Jeff, I uh, born and raised in Salem, Oregon, live in Portland, Oregon. Got two Rhode Islanders and two Oregonians. Yeah. On this. Awesome. Dan says Portland out of convenience because. <laughs> No one would know the town that he's from. Um, do you or can you shut off the lights on Herc for bioluminescence? I think that's out of. <laughs> Let's see. Whoa. <laughs> the lasers are definitely bioluminescent. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things to keep in mind is that this camera does have a UV filter uh, in it. So um, we wouldn't necessarily see anything UV because the camera can't see it. What is one thing that each of Do you are another. hoping to see on this expedition? Let me, I gotta do something here. I'm going the wrong way, that's what's happening. A shipwreck. <laughs> airplane wreckage yeah that question is always hard to answer because the things you're hoping to see are things you don't expect mm. so hard to say I'm always hoping for buried treasure but I never find any <laughs> <laughs> ice cream <laughs> a treasure chest full of ice cream I'm gonna uh, move kind of fast here for a minute, guys I, and girls. I have Still uh, looks like volcanic rock to me. Do you want to move, uh, Dan? Uh, no, I need to come to the north. That's what's happening. I'm hoping to see what my master's degree will be in. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's try another 10 meters. <laughs> so many options. East. Too many. It's not deep sea biology or uh, deep submergence engineering or... Marine geology. 
It's like, why can't I get everything that falls within the van? <laughs> why do I have to choose? <laughs> I, uh, my answer is a little bit corny because I don't, you know, know much about the biology or geology of deep sea. So I always get excited whenever the scientists in the back row get excited because we've found whatever they're they're looking for. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Let's amp it up. They still don't have any ice cream. <sighs> yeah, that and ice cream. <laughs> I just wonder if it's the other way around. If like biologists or geologists get excited about ROV stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Do. Well, Ryan, do you get excited about ROV stuff? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Was that convincing? <laughs> <Yeah>. No. <laughs> nope. We get excited when the sample uh, that we we're trying to collect makes it into a home on the vehicle <laughs> safely. <laughs> Any home, it doesn't have to be BioBox C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> CD doesn't matter. You should be able to turn around now, Paul. Cool. Um, interesting texture on these rocks. Quite a bit You're different now. To take the tether turn yeah, out. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. checking. Uh-oh, we, we've got a question in the chat that I know no one's going to want to answer. Because we, we, we had this question earlier and we all didn't want to hear it after all. What is it? What is everyone's favorite ice cream flavor? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'll go first. Whatever type is on the ship. <laughs> yeah, at this point, any ice cream. At this point, whatever the ship might be able to get, which is nothing because we're a couple, what, 1,200 miles off the coast of Hawaii. There was a couple um, vessels that passed by within the past couple of nights, and we were talking about sending the ROV over, ROVs over to go and grab the ice cream on their, on their <laughs> ships. <laughs> we can become pirates. Still tight, is it? Uh, it shouldn't be. Well, if Looks the like it in the off cam. Yeah. Oh, I think the DVL is maybe way off. You can, uh, oh. you can yep, come up right, above me. Up. Come up with me. Yep. Let's come up to the top here. And I'm gonna turn off auto head. Herc, herc, and overhead obstructions. How do you do it? Gently. <laughs> Baby steps, well, small part, movements. You know, sometimes we get the question about what is uh, Atalanta or Argus doing, and I, th I think that kind of overhead perspective, um, especially on these steep cliffs or if there's overhangs, becomes especially valuable. It's pretty dramatic right there, huh? Mm-hmm. It's a little hard to hear you. Um, okay, I guess I could hop back on SPL. I'm just going to ask, uh, what were you saying about keeping those things sterile for the rovers? Yeah, so, um, you know, when, when NASA is sending missions to other worlds, uh, they're not necessarily looking for life itself there are sometimes these very sensitive instruments that are designed to find traces of life or signs of past life um, and so uh, but we really don't want to bring earth life with us on on those missions and then find that because that wouldn't be very interesting um, so they have to go through really serious uh, cleaning procedures for the vehicles to try to make sure that we're not bringing any kind of earth microbes that could, you know, contaminate sam samples or introduce life, um, earth life to these other planets. Another 10 to the east. Thanks, Paul. But uh, there is a future mission um, being discussed, Mars sample return. Uh, the current Perseverance rover is taking a lot of core samples and, Keep and up, caching them. Yep. Um, 
And so these, these core samples are uh, hermetically sealed and there's potentially going to be a fetch rover that would take those and then put them on a rocket that launches off Mars and sends them back to Earth. Um, and so for kind of the first time, we have to also really be careful about, uh, you know, planetary protection of Earth from Mars. Like what, what could there be that we introduce to Earth? Um, I think the, the risk of there being active life is really, really <laughs> minuscule, but um, it's just interesting that uh, they have to kind of be careful about that in both directions. Yeah. How long do you stay in a dive location? I think it changes on location. This dive is, is about 22 hours long. The last couple ones were 12 hours to, yep. to 16 or 14 hours. Yeah, we can adjust a bit, you know, based on what we observe in the topography of the seamount, you know, and the depth ranges that we want to cover. So it varies, but generally between 10 hours and 24 hours in duration. We're sort of going for um, shorter dives on this mission and trying to get more quantity of dives in to cover all these seamounts because we may not ever get back here. Something just swam by. Got another zoanthid wall over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at them all on that. Yeah, in a row, like on that. It's on where the stock, yeah. The overhang like slopes inward that we're finding these. Yeah. Yellow. Yeah. Now I'm really curious to see what no, this all looks like in, in the dark, where they all glow. I think you have to have some pretty sophisticated technology to see the fluorescence. Because oh, we have a getting another ten to the east. Like I said earlier, we have a UV filter on our Bridge camera. This is the another ten meters east, please. This viewer says, "I think last year Nautilus placed monitoring stations on the seafloor. I was wondering when or if you will be returning to the to that location." Um, where did it go? As I remember the equipment you place transmit information so that ground station can receive what is being transmitted <coughs> from Florida. Look at that uh, yeah. like wrestling with the coral on the right there. <laughs> it's really <laughs> hanging on for dear life. My uh, thruster wash there. Clenching, <laughs> clenching. Pulling, uh, pulling Atalanta pretty Sometimes hard. we put instruments down that can be recovered by other ships and other vehicles. Mm. Are we able to check some of this out down here. Sure. You are uh, happy with where Adelante is at? I wonder now. if they're talking about the experience uh, we were doing off the coast of Santa Barbara right west towards uh, June. Towards her. Where we did leave stuff down on the seafloor. Right. Yeah, interested in these whips when we get a chance. Roger. Push it a little bit. There you go. These look quite a bit thinner and potentially different than what we've been seeing. Rock pen? Oh. Potentially. Oh, I think it's. Some scientists shore typing. Maybe they have a ID on this. What happened last year when the tether broke? Oh, Chrysogorget actually. So. Oh, close up. Steve Os Oskovich is saying radicipes. That's a new one for me. Hey, Steve. Is that science, Steve? Writing science in. Science, Steve. That's Steve. No, he's watching.
This is not moving where you want it to. All right, this is a great look, thanks. You all are probably aren't scared of much down here, but are there any creatures that just give you the heebie-jeebies? Too many sea legs, spiders. creepy eyes. Yeah. Sea spiders. <laughs> There's something unsettling about when you can see the sediment passing through the digestive system of a sea cucumber. Yeah. What was the weirdest thing you've experienced during a dive? Success. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Does Nautilus wheelhouse use dynamic positioning? I believe it does, yeah? Yep, yep. DP. DP. We have a uh, jet pump, I think, on the stern on the back of the ship. Okay, you can that spin around now. That can uh, that. spin in any direction. And I think there are bow thrusters too, but those are stationary, so they only give us thrust in fixed positions, fixed directions. So the direction that I want to spin to take the wrap out of the tether will put a wrap in the 6-8. Right. Oh, and for viewers who don't know what dynamic, positions, dynamic positioning is, uh, it's just a way for the ship to hold position using um, its bearing or position from GPS to counter the forces of the current, waves, and the wind. We take a look over here, something else yeah. on the wall. Acid corals, mushroom corals. Did the ship just complete its move? Yep. So they were good for another 10. Looks good, thanks. Another 10 east, Kentucky. Rich, this is that. You can uh, push in there a bit if you want, yeah. Almost like there's two different kinds there. Oh, yeah. Can we get another 10 meters east, please? There's a sea star down there in the lower left of the screen. Can oh, yeah. Pan down just a tiny bit, get a look at it. Hit Dan, when you can spare an eyeball, you can uh, see the, the daisy chain is definitely a little bit loose on the rear of Atalanta there. Yeah, right. I've been watching. I'm going to try not to look at it too much because it freaks me out. <laughs> I was so taken by all the comments when we first got on that I need to update <laughs> this still. All right, this is a good look. Thanks. Is it time for some dad jokes? Dad jokes? <laughs> I think we have a couple. I wrote up. I wrote them down because I knew we wouldn't get to them in time. Oh. Okay, here we go. Why don't get Why don't oysters give to charity? They're shellfish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ryan did it. He got it. Why did they never get old? to laugh, not because they're so funny, but because they're so silly. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, all right, do any of the other dads take offense that these are referred to as dad jokes? <laughs> do we have any dads in the room? I feel like we do. Yeah. Yeah. Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, they would be called bagels. Oh, man. 
<laughs> I think I've heard that one before. My kid likes bagels, so maybe I'll try that one on him. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this ant the zoo antic cover is so crazy. And then it switches to Coralomorphs. Zoom on these guys again. Yeah, that'd be great. Put the coral in there too. Okay. Do you think we'd be able to slurp some of these? Yeah. Jar. Right here. I got two hands now. I can if you want to get the do the bender thing and oh yeah. Get the minute out. I'll do the jar. You want me to turn off the bender? I, I can do that. Alright. You uh, turn Seeing on the crowd power. So shelled organisms too that some of our scientists ashore are thinking are brachiopods. So uh that bender's still off. <laughs> the predecessor of modern bivalves that in most uh, a lot of places. Yeah, it did displaced. The uh, those flush jars do not seem to be responding well. The carousel I mean. But uh, my jars are open. Maybe five, six, and seven. As I was updating, there was a ton of comments that came in. Uh, have we seen any plastics yet? Yes, we have. We're going in for a slurp. Yeah. <laughs> you want the other uh, camera? Or are you good? Um, I'm gonna want it at some point, but I'm kind of. That tube has some organisms that look pretty heebie-jeebie to me. 